Hey, beautiful. Um, are you still there? Hey, Sean, how are you? Can you hear me okay? What's it? Oh, come on, computer. I think the computer is as tired as I am. Four forty five AM. Oh thank you, sweetheart. Um it's ten forty here. Thinking about Ka Casey. Is she okay? I don't know. Um I guess she is. She sounded okay last night when she called in. Sounded much happier after she heard the recording. Of George, she said her spirit was renewed. She was at the store when she called, and uh, she sounded much happier. I know she said she was a little depressed earlier. <sighs> Are you uh, off today? It's Monday. Fell asleep last night. <laughs> I guess so. It's late there for you. It's only four hours difference, so I thought it was like six or eight or something. Sunday for rest. <laughs> for some people. There's a lot of controversy on uh, which day is the Sabbath day. But we know the yeah, calendar changed. Days have been changed. We know that it would be 360 days calendar instead of 365. So, know that time has changed. I think every day, um, Sabbath day is praising God. I don't pray particular every day. Uh, as far as day of rest, <laughs> 10 days in a week, still not enough. Oh, I totally agree. Totally agree. 24 hours is definitely not enough in a day. Especially when you work 10 to 12 hours, spend an hour getting ready for work, spend an hour on the road going to work, an hour coming home, then you got to go to the store or you got to stop and pay a bill. So you're out 15, 16 hours already. And then you want to unwind or you got things to take care of at home or you wash your car, <laughs> cook. So you got about an hour to sleep after you get everything out. Yeah, you have no idea, Sean. <laughs> I really do. And uh, most of my work's been physical work. Most of my life. Oh, <sighs> excuse me. So, I mean, it's good for you. You know, work's. Physical work is good for you. <laughs> Been doing it since I was 12. Yeah. 
I'd rather work long days and get it done. You know, like I, if I could, I'd work 14 hour days and, uh, <laughs> you know, have, have the other days off to do something else. Yeah. It keeps you fit. That's for, you know, and I know it's, it's better than, uh, sitting around but I guess I'm just tired of working I've been working since I was 12 years old and I'm so well, I'm tired of working for nothing <laughs> but I'll be working till I drop dead so. oh excuse me um Jesus said we're not dead we're sleeping so be working till that day comes. Whoa, what was that? I just heard, felt and heard a rumbling. That was weird. That was real weird. That's a new one. It wasn't like a, a shaking. It was more like a rumbling. Hmm. None can be as weird as that one when I lived in Chesapeake last year. It was last winter when I had the flu. Um, something, something went over the house really, really super, super loud and shook everything. And it wasn't a plane. I don't know what it was. It was either a meteor or <laughs> some kind of weird spaceship or something. It was, uh, it's, it wasn't anything I could explain. And, you know, I work around jets and planes. Uh, aliens, you're hearing aliens? I'm 36, but I've been, uh, but, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was really, really, really fit at 36. I was still pumping iron every day. Oh. Hold on, let me see why I don't have any. Give me a second. Testing, one, two, three. I got sound on my end. Maybe if you right click. Maybe if you right click your mouse. Whoops. Like a spell. <laughs> mm. Can you hear me now? Can you, can you hear me now? Got it now? Okay. I don't know what happened to it. Said it was okay. But, like I said, something weird just went through. It was a, a rumbling 
you know, like you could feel the rumbling. I don't know how to explain. And it was a weird uh, sound outside. Spencer, baby. Thought I hit enter. Oh. So, I just got home from work. Oh. Gracious. Should have made a cup of coffee. So that's it. Already. Almost 1 a.m. Should. Drinking uh, Slurpee. I swear, I think 7 Eleven put something addicting. Okay. Oh. It'd be awesome. If my Skype's working properly. Not ringing yet. Oh, I forgot to put myself available. Hello? Hello? I guess it takes a second to. Correct, maybe? Hello? Hear me yet? Oh, it said call ended. 24 minutes. Oh, that was Saturday. Are you there? Try again, because something, I guess it didn't go through. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Hello? It says it's connecting. Connecting. How's it ringing? Hello? Why is it ending? Spencer? Okay. <laughs> Hulu, hey, beautiful Spencer, give me a second. <laughs> it was working fine last night. Um, give me a second, see if I can figure out what it is. Crazy. Okay, now it's showing me available. The green light is now showing. Try again, Spencer. Sorry. How you doing, beautiful Lulu? Hello? Hello? Well, hello, Judy. Oh, well, I hello. have you. All right. How are you? It sounds great. Can you hear us? I can I can hear you. Let me see what they say in the room. All right. It says only three watching. Is it just me, you, and Lulu? Or? Yeah, but sometimes other people are listening. If they don't come in the chat room, it won't show them. Oh, it sounds good. Okay. So how are you doing tonight, Judy? 
I'm all right, a little tired, but I got excited because I saw some. No doubt, you're working on the weekend. It's yeah. a Saturday there too. I'm sure of it. Yeah, well, it's Sunday morning now. Yeah, for me too. I I took my kids out for a supper. There, my daughter's dating a young lad, and I thought I'd better meet him. Yeah, <laughs> take him out for dinner. You take oh yeah, so I took him out you? for some Greek food. Uh, what? Well, no, no, I do have lots of those, but <clears throat> no, I don't want to scare them off on the first thing. <laughs> but yeah, so my daughter turns 15 next week. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, it's that age. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got, a, you got yeah. a ways to go. My daughter's 37. Yeah. Ha! No, I have two that are 26 and and much older, but this is my youngest. So. Oh, so you've been to my... so you, you know what to expect. Yeah, I know yeah. what to do. It's, it's, I, it's I know how to better. scare them off. If I want to scare them off, I can scare them off. No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> I took him for a good ride in that turbo Jeep with the big stereo blaring today. He was well aware what daddy does. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my daughter's friends used to say, you know, because I was a bodybuilder and a brick mason, right? And, uh, well, even when I worked at the bar, I was still a bodybuilder. So <laughs> my daughter's friends would be like, man, I'm not going to your house. Your mom is diesel. She might hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I, I, I try I not to scare anyone. <laughs> I didn't need the 38 in a pit bull, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No. Awesome. So so glad that you're starting to do this on a regular basis and you're opening up a uh, place to chat and conversate all around the world. It's really good. And you're getting it down. That's really, really good. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a little hard yeah. now because I can't be real consistent with the times because of my work schedule. You know. Yeah, I own my own corporation, so um, I, I sometimes don't work for months, and then I'll go in for a day, and I get about six hundred dollars an hour just That's to right. assess some stuff, and then yeah, no, in Canada, like the opportunities are immense. Um, to make money if you if you you're a little bit energetic in any way that's why they say there's a big border crossing dilemma down in the states when they're trying to get into the south border, but more people are crossing to the north. Really? Than ever trying to get through this. Oh yeah, anybody that's trying to get into America, they're blocked. It's already they've made it all the way to the north. They're trying to get to Canada. Really, they're not really trying to get the states, right. but they can't afford the airplane ride. Right. <laughs> they get fifty thousand dollars the minute they walk in. Wow. You know? Really. Yeah, they get set up. Uh, well, you're set up for life when you come to Canada. It's free hospitalization. It's everything Trump could ever hope to dream for. Wow. And you don't I'm need a wall. And you don't need a wall. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, walking my butt off since uh, I was 12 years old. And I it's don't have colder. Medical. It's colder here in the winter. Uh, not much from where you are, but uh, the summers are hotter than where you are. Really? Yeah, like it's already it's starting to increase massively. I see Lulu in the background there, yeah, chit chatting there. there. Uh, she gets she gets extreme heat there. I couldn't endure that kind of heat, but our summers here are so beautiful. Uh, it makes up for everything. Well, how you know? hot does it get there in the summer? Uh, one hundred and six. Uh, but what's your humidity for ten days straight? What's your uh, it's high, very very high. Oh, like ours. Yeah, well, okay. I live by the biggest Great Lake in the world. Like, we have more fresh water here than anywhere in the world. Oh, nice. Uh, anywhere. Fishing. It's untouched water. Not, no, not just for fishing, but the water itself. There's no industry. There's no, um, there's nothing. No pollution. There's no people. There's no pollution. There's no needles floating in the abyss. Uh, uh, there's no people. It's just, it's pristine, you know? Right. Amazing, amazing. And you got, uh, you got me with you so know, your first call it tonight. Yeah, I just started it. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I was just popping on. Yeah. Um, I said, "Well, I better give this a try. Make sure you get this thing working." Well, I think I you sure, got it down now. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. I've been waiting to talk to you on the phone. <laughs> Lulu called in. Um, <laughs> the last night, night before really? last. Really? So you yeah. do this thing every night? Then I, I haven't been noticing. Uh, sometimes I get busy and I can't really ret retro into the show. 
Well, I hadn't done it every night. Um, it, when I first started, I was like trying to do it, you know, when I got home from work early enough. Yeah. Or I wait till Mike shows up. Your over. time there is right now. What what time is it where you are now? One o'clock in the morning. It is one o'clock here, so we're on the same time. Oh wow! Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah, it's one o five a.m. in the morning here. And which I'm up till normally five of that time normally, and I, I get up at five a.m. So I get about a four hour nap. <laughs> yeah. Why well, you get up so yeah. early? Are you working? Uh, well, it's just in, it's, it's I'm fifty now, and you've been doing it all your whole life. You you can't uh, stop doing that now. Um, and, and you feel so great. The mornings are everything. You don't want to miss the mornings here. Right. Everything is so it, it's, it's your your time. If to get up early is is not not even a you, you don't you have to do it. Like right. once you see the sunrise here and you get that coffee in the morning in yeah. Canada when the sun comes up, you, you've got to have that moment. <laughs> or there's no reason to be here. Anyone who sleeps at noon here really doesn't respect uh, where we are. I right. to me anyway. You know. Well. Yeah, I um, I love, I love sunrises, and I love, you know, when I was on a regular morning work schedule, you know, <laughs> I mm -hmm. love, matter of fact, I used to get up 3.30 in the morning and pump iron, you know, when I was a brick mason. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, so I'd get, oh, yeah. Up, I'd get up 3.30 in the morning and pump iron, drink my cup of coffee <laughs> out on the porch and watch the sunrise, yeah. Are you allowing anyone to post anything in the chat or what's um, your, uh, well, I have the thing automatically set up to, uh, to, uh, not allow like only things. mods can post links or what? Um, Just mods can post links. Well, if someone else try, try to post it and then I can make, I want, I can make you a mod, but, um, try to, try to post it. So well, you don't need to just in a second. We'll try it. We'll try it. No, it failed. Uh, because it so. should like hide it and give me the option to show it. Uh, what's in there? It's just a, yeah, it's, a, it. it's a special yeah. link to someone that uh, it has the best information right now, and uh, someone I've been following for years. But the guy has a lot of knowledge, and uh, it just cuts right to the chase of what's going on, on the on the planet right now. Okay, I don't see anything yet. Sorry, I'm having a beer. Uh, okay. Uh, no, it, it came up. It, it failed. Uh, on Mike show, I can do it because uh, when I when I'm mod, but it, basically it cuts out other links to other sites. So I'm not trying to advertise this guy because he has like forty thousand viewers anyway. He doesn't really care. But I'm not allowed to uh, put it up. I can probably email it to Lulu. She's a mod, and uh, she could put it well, in the no, link. I was trying to uh, scroll back to your name and add you as a mod anyway. I got to find your, my, uh, computer's actually. See, she, Lulu gets up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm just reading the chat. She says, cheers. Does yeah, uh, I barely, I barely slept, sleep past 4.30 in the morning. Type, type something in the room so your name will pop back up. Hello. Oh, I was allowed to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I can do it. Hey. Not lately. Why, well, Luli trying to retire early or what? <laughs> she says not lately. <laughs> okay, now. Only on the work days. Gonna... Again? Okay. Um, hello, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's my daughter's first boyfriend, and uh, so I've taken him out to supper twice now. I'm just starting to get to meet him. The first thing, you know, as a father, um, when you take them out, the first time he couldn't even talk. He was so nervous. Mm -hmm. and, and I still remember that uh, when I was dating back in, back in those days, how nervous you get with an impressive father. Right. Um, <laughs> they, they, they really, it, it gets to be really nerve wracking. I, I, I know. Uh, cute, I don't huh? want to share it. I'll share a story with you, but um, I was dating a girl up north here, and uh, what? 
right into her and her father. Her father was an amazing man. He was a master carpenter. And uh, so I offered to cut his grass. And uh, so he said, yeah, I wanted to get somebody to do that. So the the bagger fell off the lawnmower, and I drove over it with really? the lawnmower and chewed it up. <laughs> so that's how nervous I was that as, as a dating teen <laughs> back in the day. I had to try and explain it to him. Like, I don't know what happened to the bag, but there was lots of sparks and stuff, and there was debris, and uh, then the lawnmower stopped running forever <laughs> because, wow. you know. There's metal around it and wrapped into the uh, casement. Ah, Chris Mason uh, says Furman is 73 miles high. Uh, I, I I do believe it's 300. Uh, Chris, let's type in the chat. Yeah. Um. um yeah. 300 miles and uh, 300 kilometers to the moon. Ooh, somebody says three. Yeah. He's definitely a flat earther and uh, is not far away from what's hidden to us. Well, I don't, you know. And, you, know what, well, you know what's amazing? You've seen eclipses. I've seen two in my lifetime full of eclipses. Um, why is the moon the exact same exactly the same size as this one what would the odds of that be well there is, there is no odds to that god created it and no it, yes 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 it's been created and i i don't necessarily attribute it to anything else but just definitely somebody has made this for us oh absolutely and uh it, yeah, there's and, there's no way that that could ever happen in any universe. <laughs> it's impossible. And the um, the unveiling is definitely happening, and it's I think it's more than people expected it to be. I think some people. You call it the unveiling? Me. Is it the Great Awakening? Not just the Great, in my opinion, not just the Great Awakening. Um, I think it's it's more than that. It's um, it's everything. I'm seeing things that I never saw before, and um. <laughs> well, I'm the so weather sorry. the weather is only going to get uh, to the point where you, there's nothing we can do. Right, right. Oh, that's definitely coming. It's only going to get more extreme from here. Like Absolutely. there was never a tornado in Africa. If you went to school in Africa your entire life of the Cyclones. last fifty years, yeah, they they, did, they never taught you what, what actually a twister was. They couldn't teach you that in school because they'd never seen one. Well, they had five hundred last year, right? And they just had one hit land. They just had, um, a but they've a never land, seen one a, before. A cyclone that developed on land at that. Well, from Madagascar in, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, no, I think it started in between. It was the really... U- there was one in the UK or something that started on land. Oh, yeah, no, no. Not that one. No, no. The one I told you took out 11 hospitals? Well, their hospitals are tents. So, you know, you right. might have 300 people in a hospital, but th- in Africa, that's a tent, right? So, Right. How are you hearing me? Okay. You sound good on my end. How how's he sound in the room? Is it reverbing? No, I bet you not. You gotta remember to adjust your outgoing and incoming, uh, your do, bit rates I, and I your data. Do, I didn't do any of that tonight because I got home. So no, late. you don't. But if you get to up to the stage where you have two or three hundred people right. online. Uh-huh. You have to uh, uh, adjust those to make the buffering stop. And a lot, a lot of people that do the YouTube channel don't realize that. Right. And uh, it's key. And <laughs> there's a couple of really big people out that have 750 people watching every night that don't follow that. And they, they don't get it right. <laughs> but, right. Uh, well, that's good to know. Uh, see the chat up here? I turned the volume off of my computer. You're not getting any reverb. That's awesome. Yeah, so the picture I'm seeing on your yeah. screen there of the sun above the building, uh, is that just a sun. shot from uh That's not, that's the, not sun. the sun? 
That's the exact opposite. The sun what was setting in the opposite. That's in the east at sunset. The sun was setting do you, in the west. Do you feel that that is an incoming body? No, that was, well, I, I tell you, I don't know what that was. That was a glow right there. So uh -huh. I had looked out the window and saw all this orange, I mean, neon orange. You have to go back and look at the video. I did. That, that, that's a still shot from a video I took last year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and the, the sky was this, this, this weird orange, right? And but this mm -hmm. this one side had that one orange thing. I'm like, what in the world is that? Yeah. You can see when the you if tone, you're see the gray clouds. Yeah. That orange glow. Was in the there. north, you uh, in the north you see um, extreme things with three suns. Uh, visual eyes on all three, and and sometimes it's just an anomaly of the atmospheric compression we're going through. And uh, the moisture in the air. I've had rainbows go upside down here to everything. Yep, yep. I don't even bother taking a picture anymore because I've seen it my whole life. But in the south, you're not used to it, so it's kind of shocking. Well, but you know, in the I north, the, you get to see all everything. I think the poles you know, all are, the are, are um, moving a lot more than people. The pole shift are. is happening. Oh, yeah, yeah no, the pole shift that, is happening. What, yeah, and it's going to end us. It will end us, anyone on the surface, and it's it's just a matter of time. And uh, by 2046, the our time is done. But uh, that that would be the date that this pole will reach the pole, and the shift will happen, and the crustal displacement will happen, regardless of planets or anything. It's a cycle that the planet and the sun goes through uh, where we live. Uh, and they've been hiding it yeah. forever. So Douglas Volt is a, a very big genius, and uh, he's come up and solved all the riddles. And I'm really impressed because all the scientists fell online, and they're all amazed by him just coming out with what's going on and... Uh, I told Mike about it, but he's not into the grand solar minimum or anything that's going on on the planet. So I don't push it with Mike because he gets upset even when really good callers call it. And like, um, there's a guy in New York that I always like, uh, like it when he calls in. I know Lulu probably remembers his name, but he's such a good soft spoken feller and he's right in downtown New York and he's, he's such, such a good oh, caller. Um... I am not a good caller compared to him. His voice is just like, he's good for radio, you know, like you could sell this guy. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. I can't mm -hmm. remember his name. Yeah. He, he's so good. He's telling how things are there. And really, he's so, so good. Jeez, I don't know where to put my phone. We're on the Bluetooth. Oh, well, there it's it is. It's sounding fine. Yeah, no, I'm running oh, around the AJ? house. <laughs> yeah, KJ, K, oh, KJ. KJ. That's right. Yeah, when he calls it, he knows what's going on, and he's just down to earth, and he's ready for it. He's not in a good location by any means to survive anything that's coming. I and uh, a lot of underground but he's a great anymore. caller. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. Uh, they, they went past. You can only have underground in granite. Um, you can't have it in sandstone. That's why you don't have it in Florida. Uh, like, right from the the mandrid down, the mandrid, the whole base of it is sandstone. And when it fractures with an earthquake, all the sand recedes and, and the whole land drops. And, and that that's going to be a recycling area, and people are going to die, like, in the millions. Uh, you don't want to live in the Mandarin. If you live, you know where you live and know what you're on. Uh, I live on granite in the north. It will be here uh, well past my, my existence. Uh, we're on the Canadian Shield. But where the Canadian Shield um, switches to the Craton, it's just, um, it's like a shale. And when these earth vibrations happen and stuff, 
um, there's nothing to hold the surface anymore. When you see these sinkholes, and I know you've seen some pictures of some sinkholes that swallowed houses with people in them, um, there's no way to avoid this. You, uh, you can't live on that kind of surface. And it's great to live by the ocean, but the ocean, all of the ridge of it is based on limestone that's holding them up. And right. when, the, when the time comes, there's nothing. There's nothing left. That has to be recycled, and it will be recycled, and it's been done over and over again. All these cities under the water, uh, well, they had limestone. <laughs> you know, like they, they didn't know that, but <laughs> they lived on limestone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm just starting to read the chat now that I'm back over uh, by the computer screen here. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. So I don't want to keep these. Anyone else? Well, go ahead. I said the only thing I want to I want to uh, say about this mm -hmm. channel is I don't ever want to talk negative about anyone. Um, oh. Yeah, that's I'm not just, a negative person. Yeah, that's just, you know, that's me. Um, yeah. I believe in, in staying yeah, positive. Yeah, no, I know. I know. And, you Mike's know. on a rant right now. He's been burned a few times. And, uh, yeah. Mike's always talked his piece. And uh, I respect that, too. I, I really respect the fact that he stays conscious with reality to what can be false and what's real and... Um, he he's been hit so so hard in so many directions that that he he knows something that's that's false right away because he's researched it thoroughly. I really enjoy that about what. And he provides. A, I've been uh, researching. He provides a pretty fair platform for people to. You know, he does. He does. He does. And he's been burned now and twice, and it's not good. Was scanned, and uh, actually, actually I, I, I really, really I, I can't speak on that because I don't know the stories, so I'm going to stay out of that, and and I don't want to. Yeah. You know, no, no, no. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, scan, scan hated me, but uh, I like Scan. I, I liked who he was. I like what he represented. I liked who he was. I like every part of him. But uh, my comments are sometimes in the room. I joke around way too much, and uh, he wasn't a joking kind of person. Uh, Scan wasn't, anyway. But they were probably really good friends. And, and James, uh, well, he emails me five times a day. And I have Mike's side, too, because um, a lot of his research is YouTube research. Not out in the field and doing the work. So um, I take both their backs. James, I still think, is a beautiful person. I don't like what he did. and uh, But I like him. I will talk to him. He's welcome in my home anytime. Both of them are. Well, I love, you know, I, I, um, I am instructed to love everyone. <laughs> and ah. you know and and um I try to and people get mad at me for this and they have my whole life even before I became a Christian I looked I tried to look right. for the good in people I wasn't as good at it then as I am now believe me cuz you know I could get mad too and and I would get vengeful um thank the lord I'm not that way anymore but you know, that's I'm right. As we get older, patience sets in. Yeah, boost, boost. I used to. Um, well, I, I still make excuses for people. Well, it's not making excuses, but you know, most people have reasons why they do what they do, and sometimes they don't even know why. You know, and so I, yeah, I, I analyze everything you know within myself first on people and I try to understand, you know, that they may be having a bad day, a bad month. Um, they may have misunderstood right. something. Right. You know what I mean? There's that's there, right. There's so many variables in life and there's so much stress that, you know, and sometimes people mess up. And sometimes they do it just to yeah. mean so, you know I'm a very forgiving person, Judy, don't get me wrong. I mean you gotta really wrong me <laughs> to uh 
to be on the out, that's for sure. Um, I, I don't do a lot of Bible thing. I did when I was younger. Uh, my grandmother was a Christian all the way, and we had to go to Sunday school and stuff. And I did the time. Um, uh, and I knew it was all false right from the beginning uh, at an early age. And uh, I just I just stayed away from it. But I, I respect it completely in what you stand for and, and what you do and, and your faith. I understand that faith because my whole family had that faith. Um, they're all dead now. Um, they died of cancer. Uh, the cure was right in front of them all these years, but it was, it was taboo to them. Um, <laughs> you know, like, you, that you can't do that. That's wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, how they hide stuff from us. Oh, it's crazy. You know, both my parents died of cancer, uh, which was totally curable. The cure came out in 1972, and I wouldn't have known this at an early age when when it happened to them. But I found out now, and I've cured about I think 35 people now. But I, I continue to make the cure for them, as many do. And now there's millions cured from it. Really? So what is, is it? Holy so, shit. so what is the cure for cancer? The cure for cancer is actually THC, um, but only uh, in a certain format. And it's it's actually killed brain tumors, uh, cancerous, uh, well, everything from ovarian cancer. God, God uh, any killed kind of my cancer. brain tumor. <laughs> there you go, and that, well, that, that that's it, a good thing. Uh, but for these people no that are getting radiation it, right now, they're doomed. <laughs> um, totally. Uh, THC given to, in the right supplement for the right job has been a cure for cancer since 1972. Anyone taking it and discovering they have cancer, it's a 99% survival rate. Um, I don't know if you think that's a cure or not, but to me it is. And not, CBD oil isn't, Sean. It's not. I'm just watching the chat here. Uh, CBD oil is the uh, plant extraction only without the THC. It has great value for the body. It does. It does. It's like eating the healthiest salad of your life, right? For you, it's, it's amazing. But to kill cancer, it's the other part, unfortunately. It's uh, THC. And Does if you need any kind of information you ever wanted, if someone wants to text you and, and say, you know what, I just found out I have this kind of cancer, I'll tell you exactly what to take and where to take it. In 10 weeks, you'll be going into a doctor's office where um, at, the care is like almost free, right? There's no money involved. <laughs> and uh, it'll be sent right to you, like... In BC, they started sending it out about 10 years ago to anyone that would ask. And, and like I said, the cure rate, and if people are too far gone and they've already taken their radiation, the success rate is only about 80%. Um, but for anyone that finding out they're having cancer and this is their first time treatment, it's a 99% cure. And that, that that's scary. That and the government who, would hide who, that from us, Judy. sending it out? Well, the first gentleman to, uh, and she's actually from Canada. I can't put websites on because I don't have the wrench, but uh, you do have. I the think wrench. it was Tears. You're slow. I have dude. a wrench, though? You, yeah, I gave you a wrench oh, when I sorry. told you to type in the room. I wasn't even in the room when you did that. I wasn't even in the room when you yeah, did you that. Did, okay, you I told you to type something, and you typed okay. hello again. You all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Okay. Well, no, I wasn't in the room. I wasn't having a smoke. I oh. have Bluetooth, so. Oh. Yeah, no, the whole house is wired for sound. I'm an engineer, so I get all the technical stuff here. Okay, so this site is not for the cure, but it's something you should definitely. If you haven't seen uh, the second part of this to that link, um, this is what's going to happen to us as the poles shift. If you're interested, the link's now on your screen, and I'll find oh, you the other information that you want. Yeah, no, now. if you can go back and look at it, that's fine. It, it doesn't matter. It's not coming until 2046, so don't worry about that. That's just for your family tree more than anything, but it's what we're going to go through, and there's no doubt it's happened uh, so many times on the earth. We, we don't have the 2046. Like it's going to happen again. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll be in diapers when, when the hand swipes the earth, which is described in the, the reading of that. But Oppenheimer actually does the reading of a, a great book of a man that's been lost and not found that uh, solved the riddle of earth. And uh, he depicts it as, uh, do you ever, do you follow Oppenheimer at all? No. The Ranch Project? Uh, he's just, he makes me laugh every morning. He does like a five minute video every morning. And he makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> I almost forget the information he's trying to tell me. He's so good. But uh, he's so down to earth. He's over in Colorado. And just a crazy individual. Um, he's left his work. Um, his his great 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 grandfather uh-huh. invented invented the bomb. Really? Yeah, the bomb, Hiroshima. So that that name Oppenheimer should ring a bell in many uh, many sites. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. If I can copy it. Uh, anyone with any type of cancer, this is your start to your cure. You'll be figuring it out in about twenty minutes. Okay. Uh, you know, that's a pretty common thing. People all run into, yeah, right there. Phoenix tears. That's cool. Uh, he, he actually wanted to leave Canada at one point. They, they arrested him twice for curing people. So tell me this. Why, why do the people that smoke weed their entire life? Oh, smoking, it's not going to, smoking, it's just to get high. That's a different thing. It's like people doing meth or any other drug. But you're still. Um, It's legal in Canada. You can smoke whatever you want. But but I'm saying you're still getting the THC in your system, so. No, it it will not cure you. It'll actually, if you smoke a joint a day, it's all good for you. It's as good as a glass of wine. Except that it's and they're, dangerous. they've realized that in it, Canada it's equal to 16 cigarettes as far as the damage it does to your lungs if you smoke it. No, no, the THC eliminates all lung cancer uh, when you're smoking it. It also okay. fixes your gums, your teeth, and any uh, anything on the way down when you smoke it. It's so healthy. I've had my dentist tell me. Like, what are you doing with these gums? Like, is this even possible? I said, well, I smoke a joint once in a while. I could tell, she said, because she's upset because you don't have any, there's no gum disease. There's no, okay, well, that's, um, that's it takes genetics. care of. <laughs> because I know, people, I know people that smoke lots of weed and uh, have issues. Let me, I'm trying to see if I can take two calls at once or if it's going to disconnect. Are you still there, Spencer? Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah, we're here. Okay, Spencer's there. Who's the hey, other baby. Who's the other caller? That's my daddy. Oh. Okay. We got call me play. Ricky Hodler. I got mad cryptos and I th- I throw them at all the all the strippers. <laughs> Anyways, all what's right. up with you? So he had fun. Oh, we're just playing out him. <laughs> oh, what's up, Boo? Anyway, sorry about that. You still there, Spencer? Did I lose Spencer? (laughs) Spencer, I'm sorry about that. You can call back. Good morning. Hello? Hello? Hey, what happened? Hello? Hey, you there? Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, I was calling to ask like, what is the show all about? Um, people talking about their concerns. I'm just new. I'm new to you. I'm new to YouTube, and I like I like chat, and um, I like to call radio shows. You do. 
do. Ah, do you really like to talk or, or do you just like to play games? I really like to talk. I do. No, I like to talk. I want to know what your thoughts are on putting. I know it's horrible. Do you think it could be fake? What's fake? Because you broke up. I didn't hear you. The guns and the, and the dead people. Guns and dead people? Do I think it's fake? No guns yeah, are real. Yeah, they're all fake. <laughs> guns are real and the people aren't dead. They're asleep until Jesus comes back. Do you believe it? So you're a Christian. I'm a Christian too. Do you think the people who, who play with magic are playing with fire and that it's going to come back and haunt them? You mean like, you know... The magic, like you see on TV, like Houdini. Like black magic. No, like real. It doesn't even matter. Like Ouija boards. Um, I don't. I don't really. Um, <laughs> I don't know that Ouija boards really do. You anything. sound like you might be in the magic. Have you ever sacrificed a chicken? <laughs> no, sweetheart. I'm not, I'm not from the Bayou. <laughs> You don't do brujera. Bru 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 uh, what do they call it? I don't know. Brujera, bru brujera, bru a voodoo. No voodoo. You don't do here. that. No. <laughs> good. I don't do magic either. But I could if I did. I'd be really good at it. You think? Hey, all all the big books say don't play with magic, and so I don't play with magic. <laughs> you're pretty entertaining. <laughs> Thank you. You're you're pretty. Oh, thanks. Where are you from? And entertaining. Where Portland. are you from? Huh? Brooklyn? Portland, Oregon. Oh, I was going to say Portland, yeah. Oregon. Okay. How's the I'm weather there? I'm from the there? land of Antifa. How's the weather Eat there? And sucks here. I hate it here. I've been here for seven years. Yeah. And the medication doesn't work. And it's cold and rainy. Medication doesn't work. <laughs> it's cold, yeah. I, uh, my daddy, my daddy told me uh, that that he got a new toy. Oh, really? Yes, he said it's a a penis grip. Oh boy! Pistol grip. <laughs> Oh, he was kind of entertaining, but had to let him go on that one. So did, I lost Spencer. What happened to Spencer? Which is a Satan's scum and bad. And, yep. <laughs> I know, right, Lulu? Oh, the sound went out? I'm sorry. Can y'all hear me now? Hey, Casey. Oh, what happened to my... There we go. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yeah, it was my fault. I was trying to be... Um... Nice, and I was trying to connect the other callers so we all three could talk, but um, I guess I did something wrong. And then, you know, that interesting uh, <coughs> man from Oregon. Uh, 29 miracles and only one bad. You want to call in and tell us what your miracles were? Chris? And sorry, caller from Oregon, but, uh, we don't, we didn't want to hear, um, sexual in the end in the, the, Yeah, call in, Chris.
I don't think I've ever heard Chris's voice. Uh, Spencer, you're funny. Freeway, no way. <laughs> Hey, I'm Lingo. I think they're talking about the old CB radios. You know, like truckers use and like the police used to use. Do not turn mediums or... Necromancer. Do not seek them out. Self unclean by them. Morse code is my preferred method of communication. <laughs> All right. That means you're not going to call in, Chris? Yeah, I used to like to play on the CB radio when I was uh, young. I like to mess with the truck drivers. But as far as, but as far, hmm, as far, but as for the cowardly way, man, it's the screen scrolling away on me. The faithless, the, te the detestables, the murderers, sexually, sorcerers. Like, Amateur radio, which bounces off our phone. <laughs> it, and it really looks like a dome now. It didn't used to, but the sky actually looks like a dome now. I've been uh, video recording it for the last three years. There's this new uh, whatever surrounding the horizon that causes the moon to rise red every night. Every single night we have a blood moon. I mean, like blood red, not like orange when we have a uh, lunar eclipse and they call that a blood moon. I'm talking about a real blood looking color moon every night now that it rises. If you can get out to a, uh, the ocean where you have no obstructions to see it coming up. It's blood red for the last three years. Like that video I did at Christmas. I could go out there every night, but, uh, well, not every night, you know, because uh, my work schedule. But if I did go out every night that the moon rises at night, you would see it. Egg by Egg Boy. Guess I miss a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'll check them out, Spencer, when I... Probably tomorrow when I have some time. Sure, it won't be tonight, because when I get done chatting with y'all, I will be going deep. So, who's going to call in? Lulu could call in with her cute accent. Oh, a politician got egged? Really? My family tree is the whole world. Since uh, we're all God's children, we're all family. I mean, even if, you know, if you believed in evolution, well, that's the truth, Spencer. That's how I see it. We are all the human race. We are all family. 
And I mean, they, they, you know, <laughs> even like I said, even if you believed in evolution, which is totally stupid, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, I don't mean to call anybody stupid that believes in it. I mean the, uh, Yeah, <laughs> my soul is, it, I, my soul is good. Um, my actions haven't always been good, but, you know, I wasn't really in touch with who I was for a long time. I was uh, misled. Because, you know, when you're a child, before you, before you develop the adult mind, which is the analytical mind, and you don't develop that until puberty, and in, be, prior to that, Children internalize everything. They accept it as fact. You know, so if, if you have uh, the people raising you, if they teach you that you're dumb and you'll never be anything or that you're this or that you're that, you internalize it and just accept it as fact. And it's it's in your head, somewhere in the back of your head, even if you're not thinking about it. It, you know, it kind of dictates how you're going to act and how you respond to things. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, well, it is early in the morning. Yeah. Why Good morning. Uh, oh, can you turn down your volume, morning. please? Good morning. To the chat. Yeah, okay, it's gone. Better? Yeah. I thought I'd better call back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's almost two o'clock in the morning. You mm -hmm. just got off work. And you're mm -hmm. still doing this. What the hell's wrong with you, girl? Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to build a show, and okay. um, you know I'm up late because of work, and I know there's people that are up late. Because, first of all, it's a weekend, and then the, there's people in different time zones. And then I had one caller the other night that suffers from insomnia, and oh yeah, we've been uh. We were praying for him, and, and you know, so I'm like, if, if I can be there for somebody, I'll be there for somebody. You know, I could come home and watch a movie. Atta girl. I will in a little bit, Casey. Yeah. We had house guests tonight, and when they come through my house, they, you know, it's a 1932-built home, but oh, I've nice. uh, modernized it to uh, the highest technology, so... If the power were to go out for four days, you can still watch uh, TV and internet. Really? And, uh, well, you have the latest technology all in, in front of you at all times. Well, unless the whole, <laughs> if, if everything went down, all the satellites and there was a complete disaster, then you'd actually notice it. But, uh, and, that, and that's going to happen. Oh, no, it's going to happen. But I live in an EMP-free home. I've had my neighbor come by. He says, the power's been out for four hours. Uh, what are you guys doing? Well, we're just watching a movie. It's like we had no idea the power was out. I have a 700 pound backup grid just for the TV and the internet. Like yeah, we had no idea. It lights up the entire living room. The same with it's not going to happen, right? Um, but that's what I do for a living. I'm an engineer, and uh, I install that kind of equipment, so a lot of it comes up to me. Um, as used, so uh, I have all that stuff, and it's a great thing, I tell you. To be ready for when the power goes out is it's everything for a lot of people. How do you feel uh, uh, the U.S. would go for a nine day power outage the entire country, um, like in New York City? How do you feel New York would do nine days, no power? Well, I can tell you this much. We had a okay. hurricane, and it was only a Cat One. So don't let Cat Ones fool you, because they can they can cause a lot of yeah no. So we no, had, I, we had the, power the, outages, yeah. and um yeah, but it, if it, it went out for nine days, okay. Let what me would tell you, you what, let me tell you what happened in three days' time. People started shooting. People. Oh, it was out for three days. 
Listen, I'm not, wait, it's not longer than that, but okay. within three days, people were already shooting each other in gas station lines. <laughs> because no gas. <laughs> no. no. Yes. Yeah, yes. The, yes. Th- that was it's here a Mad Virginia. Max situation. That was here in yeah. Virginia Beach. No, it's okay? totally crazy. <laughs> people are going to shoot each other. You know they're going to eat each are. other. When, uh, in Europe last year, there was a huge, like a little bit of a food shortage. Be, deliveries couldn't be made. And there's two women fighting in an aisle over the last uh, Skippy peanut butter, and they were fist fighting. And they put this on YouTube, and it was like, holy Christ, it was the last thing on the counter. And it, it was almost funny because nobody is prepared with extra food to go the extra couple of weeks where something's going to happen. And if you don't have that now, you're, you're pretty much doomed. Like I have food and seeds to last years when I grow my own food, but my my neighborhood is going to seek me out and destroy me. Like I'm doomed here. I, I actually guess, have to move further out. I guess I don't have to worry about that because I can't afford to prep for anything. So, Judy, 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 I'm prepping my soul. You know what I mean, and 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 I hope uh, that I can help people get through it, but. I ain't got to worry about them stealing from me because I won't have anything for them to steal. Uh, well, we all live check to check. And uh, like I've, I've had the benefit of having my own business where I can just spend money wherever I want. And, you know, there's, I'm never going to be a want for food or anything. Well, my children's children won't ever expect to ever have to buy a seed because I've bought enough bullets and seeds to last everyone. And it's all about the family tree. It's not uh, about me. Lulu, are you going to come up? Up to Canada? Never mind selling that house. It's a free trip. Come on up, Lulu. Let's go, Lulu. (laughs) Come on, Lulu. Come to Canada. You've never been here? You've got to see God's country. But I think Judy might come eventually too. I want to go somewhere where where I can work and get and get paid for it and uh, have some medical care. I hire you. I hire you. I'm a hard. Want to come? Yeah, you're hired. Good enough. Done. Come on up. I'm also a pretty good. Uh, Medicare's free here. Yeah, I heard you. Say All that. medical's free. No, it's true. It's been that way forever since but I was know, born. When, when I Canada to, has Medicare. When I used to work in the bar, there was these um, gentlemen that owned a they own they own a chain of pizza restaurants called Chinella's, and they all okay. went to they all went to Canada, and they said when they got there, they got questioned really hard about how long they were going to stay, and they uh, oh. checked their computers. Well, they were if about you go to the states, you get the exact jobs. same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you go to the states, it's the same thing. I travel there, and I have a I get a ten year passport now. They have here in Canada, and when I cross the border here, I actually serve as the border crossing for their cameras, their security system, so I know all the people there. And uh, so I want to take my daughter down to see the Dells and the, the biggest water park in the world. And uh, they basically said to me. Well, Spence, like, could you not renew this? Like, you know what? Just go. Go right through because they know me and what I'm doing. And we're just going to the Dells, the biggest water park in the world with the kids. And uh, and I'm going to spend about 10 grand, you know. And they love that part. So they just let you through. Like, and I love that part about the border. I love the northern border between Canada crossing to the States because if you're a Canadian crossing, you're welcome because you're just going to spend a fortune, right? You're going to spend everything down there. We don't spend anything here. We want to spend it all there. It's more for your money. You have a bigger bang for your butt. So we spend it all. So I'm yeah. taking the kids back to, uh, to, to the Wisconsin Dells this year. And I'm trying to narrow it down uh, to a weekend. Uh, anyone going to be in Wisconsin Dells for the, uh, for the great American holiday, uh, I will be there. I'm going to take a hotel room for 12, and I'll have a boat, a yacht on the water, and 
You're welcome to come. The business is paying for it, so it's all good. I think Lulu would like the biggest water park in the world. Hey, Lulu. I love it's water. It's usually 120 degrees, which is your normal temperature, Lulu. So for July 4th, anyone wants to come out, that's where we're going to be at. I love swimming, but I'm pretty sure I'll be at work. July 4th, Lulu. Well, I think you can make it for this. Like, how far south are you, Judy? I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm on the east coast, <laughs> and I'm all okay. the way on the east coast. I'm on I'm on the beach in Virginia. Oh, you you're in for some big trouble there. You need to get out. You know. I know. I'm already having drinks. Um, yeah. Eyes. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't know if what the for some tsunami. You just have to get out of there. Uh, Ohio's not so good either. Um, the tor the tor tornadoes in Ohio Ohio this year will be so uh, catastrophic. No one will ever want to live there again, and that'll be for this year, uh, for this summer. And I travel there all the time, and they always have tornadoes, but it, it's going to get way worse than it is. Oh, I know. Well, you know, there's, there's we, no didn't, we didn't used to get tornadoes here. And then all of a sudden, now they have, um, they've installed the, uh, yeah. those horns. And now yeah. they have us, well, what do you they think they're trying to tell you there? They're, they're, having, they're, they're having us do tornado drills. So I'm like, mm. and we had three yeah. tornadoes touched down. So is that, is that telling you? Year. Yeah. We don't have tornadoes here, and we can't have tornadoes here. The ionosphere in the north is unaffected by what's going on right now. Yeah, and what? every There's superstorm, every on. super, it doesn't matter. We're going to be the Ecuador by the end. Uh, yeah, if you maybe. want to survive, everybody says move north, but it's the government telling you that and the psyops telling you that. If you want to live, you actually have to move north. Honestly, I was going to move. I can move anywhere in the world. I have no financial problems in any way. I can move anywhere. I mean, I have a place in Russia. Uh, I was thinking about moving to Australia at one point, but I tell you what, I'm holding strong. Uh, this this is going to be, uh, I think people are going to migrate north, and eventually, um, when things are totally done, they'll migrate south again. But uh, Lulu says move far north of Queensland. I don't know. Um, uh, I think it's the Indian Ocean uh, that's going to roll right over Australia during the event. And it's happened many times over. Uh, it's a beautiful paradise, and she's right. And I would love to move there, but um, yeah, there's no surviving that. None of them survived the last time around. We had to repopulate the whole area. Every 12,000 years, we go through this. And um, it's just part of the cycle. Yeah, well, there's nothing really to prove that. You know? Yeah, actually, there is. But it's been proven. It's on the link I gave you. And um, so every 12,000 years, we go through the cycle of the Bible. Noah's flood. You could call it that. Uh, it's all in there. It's a very short read. Diamond does a nice job. And if you follow him and what he does, uh, just a little bit, you'll be so tuned into what's going on. He is a brilliant man, geologist, but uh, well, he, he doesn't he like me, so that's a very good sign. Very good sign. Because I depict everything he does. <laughs> oh, I'm all over him. He hates it, but he likes me. I think he does. <laughs> I don't. I don't put in. I don't put much faith in. Uh, um, Lulu, the great beer rethink is saying nothing. <laughs> I'm just reading your chat uh, on the screen. Here. I put my, my yeah uh, my belief in the Holy Spirit and. Uh, like when I well, ascension, people, ascension is everything uh, for a lot of people. When I research things, if it doesn't sit right with my soul, 
you know, yeah. then I'm like, no, that sounds good and plausible, but no. Yeah. Yeah, there's only so much you can do and uh, and somebody you can save. Um, the last time this happened, only 46 females survived. Really? And somebody can, somebody can tell that, huh? <laughs> well, just, just <laughs> read the reading. Uh, well, it's right from it, the Bible. I'll, I'll read it. Yeah. yeah. No, That's it's right from the Bible. Bible. You'll love it. Yeah. yeah. What kind it's of Bible It's based on it's the real, real Bible. Well, the real one. Survived. Hebrew. It's a real Hebrew Bible. Uh, Hebrew is not uh, for us. <laughs> Hebrew is uh, a language I don't think humanity was meant to understand. Um, they're from a different time, uh, earlier than us, that were as advanced as us, maybe way farther than us, but uh, it's out there. I'm spiritually facing it. I'm trying to read uh, what, what everybody's typing here. Ah, Lulu, just come to Canada. You'll never leave. <laughs> she's, she's going through some stuff down there. They're going to have a really bad deal down in the south. So if she thinks it's been a drought and a flood and a drought and a flood, uh, what the earth's going through right now, the great deserts of the world where it's just sand are all blooming. Um, they're going to flourish. It's going to be grass. It's just going to be the whole earth is going to change. And where there used to be water, there's going to be drought. And where it used to be warm, it's going to be cold. Everything is going to change. It's going to mess up so many people and everything that they ever believed in. You're going to have to get used to it. Or adapt or do what you got to do to survive. It says, uh, Lulu said, 20 years ago, I heard Australia will become a one big desert island. Actually, all your deserts, Lulu, are going to flood. And uh, you're going to start seeing green grass this year, actually, in, in your deserts. Uh, by next year, they're going to flourish, and you're going to see small trees. It uh, doesn't mean anything. Um, we're going through a cycle, and all of us are going to make it. How do you feel, sir, uh, Judy? Um, Am I too far out there? No, I'm not going to say you're too far out there. I just, I don't, um, I don't agree with it as far as, um, see, I don't believe, I don't believe that this carbon dating thing that they do is correct to begin with. It's, it's not correct. correct. No, no, it's not. not. It's not. not. None, none, none of what I said is based, based on that. None of it. Now, um, whether, whether carbon God, dating is wrong, and you're right. Whether God, I've wondered this myself. When you whether, say God, you mean the Creator, right? Right, right. The Holy Father, the Creator of everything. Exactly. The Creator. So I always call him the Creator because he definitely. This has definitely been created. Like oh, absolutely. There's, there's too many things to say that it's not. I mean, we're, we'd be totally stupid to not say that, you know, the moon, the moon is the same size as the sun, and that's just going to happen every day Okay, so, sp in, so in the Spence, universe. So, Spence, since you believe in the creator and not the big the big explosion. <laughs> yeah, there's no Big Bang. Yeah. Um, our sun will mini nova by 2046, so all these other things we're going through. Our sun is already mini nova. It's pretty minor. <laughs> Every it, what happens is all these uh, meteors and stuff go into the sun, and they 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 build up a dust on on this giant thing, and uh, it releases. It has to. It's just it's like a spark hits, and it it has to burn the dust off. But when it's on something that's so much bigger than where we live, it affects us like beyond you wouldn't believe. Um, they call it. Well, I had friends, if you visit uh, one of the videos from Oppenheimer's today, um, they're just showing you the layers of where people were compressed by the hitting of the star when it novas. And, and our sun novas every 1,200 or 12,000 years. On a cycle, 
whether another planet comes in to see it or anything. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's a perfect time clock, which is ticking down. And the government's known about this for, oh, it's just unbelievable. Since the 1950s, I believe. And uh, it's, a, it's a clock cycle. And when our sun gets to the state where it has to burn off the excess, it's going to throw something at us that we're not going to be able to handle. And we go through the, what it's called to be the catastrophe. Okay, well, let me ask you this, Spence. Why do you think that happens? Mm -hmm. Why do you think it happens like that? If there's a creator. Why do you think that uh, the creator has immense the cycle? Uh, it goes so much deeper in thought. Um, there was life on Earth before there was a sun. Just to show you where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. um, the Earth was here. And Saturn was our original sun. And we were captured when the sun came in. Saturn and, and us were captured. And I don't want to say gravity because gravity is really not a thing. Uh, we were captured. And everyone on the planet that's a billionaire worships Saturn because they know it's our original sun. And everybody calls it Satan. Everyone calls it Satan. And I'm talking about the billionaires, which I talk to. Sometimes I have to talk to two or three of them a day. Uh, they all believe Saturn is our original sun. They're not wrong. It was. Millions of years ago, Saturn was our sun. It's a red dwarf now, which is our binary to the sun. And it got captured and destroyed. Okay, Spence, uh, let, let me let me ask you ahead. this before I forget. Go ahead. Okay, since you believe in a creator, right? He, he's, mm -hmm. he's obviously uh, pretty, you know, pretty good at at, you awesome. know, at what he does, right? Do you think yeah. that he so honestly? Perfect, yeah. Do you? I didn't say. Okay, he gave us free will though, and then and then we know we're dealing with Satan too, so. Everything is not perfect here on yeah. earth, but I believe it's perfect in heaven. Right. And his design and his plan for us is perfect. Not not here on earth. We, we were already told that he sent Jesus to give us the message of what was going on and what to watch for. So what I'm asking is if you believe that there, there was this creator, right? Why don't you believe that he actually gave us a, a, a handbook? which is the, the the inspired word of God in the Bible to guide us. It is the Bible, but it's not the Bible you read, Judy. It's the Hebrew Bible. Okay, the Bible I read is... is it's not the same translation from Hebrew. The translation from Hebrew, the real Bible that okay. ours was created I, from, I go to, I, does I, not... I, Translate. I go to the Hebrew Bible and I go to the Greek Bible. Yeah. I go to I I translate yeah. my King uh, James. Greek's not far back. That's right. I'm familiar with all of them. Okay, well they but say no. the same thing. They do, but they don't. Um, it, once you get to Hebrew, Hebrew is a, a very very foreign language. Many many people can't read this. Uh, they can't interpret it. They don't understand it. And it's totally for a good reason. Uh, Hebrew is not from our planet. It, it is from our creator. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I do. Okay. I think um, that's a given. Okay, so do you believe he got um, us? So our Bible... Our Bible is based off of a Hebrew Bible, which was uh, translated from alien, because Hebrew is alien. How do you feel about that? Well, we're technically we're alien. We're not. Yes, 
Hebrew is alien, and that's where we came from. All existence and everything we know and everything we've been. Now, I, I will say this. I've often wondered that, and, and I don't believe it's 12,000 years. I believe it's closer to 3,600 years. But I, Yeah, it's not. It's I, not. Well, you know. But that, if, you, if you divide that down, if you divide that down, it's only three cycles. Right? Okay. So the last time the, the Earth was wiped out completely of all existence and all humanity, was 12,000 years ago. But see, Scripture Look back doesn't 12, say... 12,000 years. Scripture There's no people. Okay, Spencer... Though, scripture won't have to tell you. Scripture doesn't say look that... Look at history. I'm not... I'm, you can't look at look, history. None of us can look back 12,000 years. There's no technology that can do I it. did. <laughs> I did. I took a quantum computer and I looked back. We can only go back 12,000 years. And everyone died. 46 females survived, and that's why we're here. And no men survived? I've spent years on this. 46 females, so 46, they were asexual? 12,000 years ago, the people that were smart enough to survive this, 46 females survived, and we're all based. Every one on the planet here now is based on that family tree. So it was just females. Twelve no thousand years ago, no men, no men were here. I'm not. No, no, no. That's just the females that survived. Forty-six females survived the last catastrophe, and you are part of that family tree. Twelve thousand and sixty-eight years ago, to be precise. And I can prove it. Okay, let me. But ask I don't you think this. you want to know it. Let me I don't ask, think you want to know. Let me ask you this. Where did RHO negative blood come from? Since it doesn't, um, since they can't I, identify it with anything on Earth, where did it come from? Yeah. Well, I'll just give you one thing. I have a universal blood, so, so like, you're RHO negative. very rare. You're RHO negative, too? Right. So am I. Yes. So yes. I'm asking, how do so you... So I'm a you universal with? donor. Right, we're the universal donor, but we can't take anybody else's blood. And we, and normally you'd be left-handed. Are you left-handed? No, I'm not. I, I, I'm right-handed. Um, who's, just, who's, no, I haven't had too much to drink. I had like four beer, okay, buddy? I just read in the chat there. Uh, he says, you've been drinking too much, he says. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just, uh, just had a regular three beer or whatever. <laughs> So, uh, any questions you want to ask me now, let me know. I won't call on the Mike show. He's against everything I'm saying. He doesn't believe in the Grand Solar Millennium. He just, just he has a narrow path to oh, the, you're his doing vision. that again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want I, to talk negative. If, if it's not something positive, I don't want to talk negative about anybody. Oh, no, I love Mike. I love his show. I love his people. I love his everything. Part of him, sorry. Uh, but I can't call in because he's against everything I believe in. He lets you speak your mind just because he doesn't agree with you. No. No, he cuts you right off. And I don't blame him. It's against what he believes. It, it's not what he believes. And that's fine. I'll be calling in his show very shortly. I have to call in every year. That's what I do. If I told him I had the cure for cancer, I think believe, I believe one of his parents died of it as well. He would just laugh about that, as many people have. But meanwhile, I have 35 people that have just cured. And uh, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. I mean, people need to know this stuff. You need to get that information out there and save lives. There's a cure for this thing, and we need to beat it. And cancer is a big one. Stay healthy. Love you, Judy. Love your I show. Love you too, Spence. Taking up a lot of your time. And uh, anytime you uh, want me to call back in, I'm going to do so. All right. It was enjoyable. Definitely uh, interesting. If you have anything to ask me first, I know I put a lot out there for you. Do you have anything to ask me before I go? 
Um, no, I'll probably re-listen to it tomorrow, and then I'll probably have some questions. Oh, my God. Yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, some of it All was right. uh, a bit overwhelming. So, like I said, and then I'll check yeah, out. Yeah, no, out. I can take it much further when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll check out the links and see where... Uh, where the well, those problems. things lead, lead you to saving your family tree and curing cancer. That's what the two the two links I put up tonight. And, so, uh, so, 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 there's no, it no us, reason to live in pain anymore. So it links us to Jesus, right? <laughs> uh, Jesus did this for sure. If he was here, he probably put that plant on this earth. It's well, secure, so why know, wouldn't he have done that? You know, like, he said, right. If you believe he, said, he right. is what he is, then he planted that seed. Well, you know, I believe that if we, if we followed scripture to start with, like we were told what was healthy to eat, and if we had stuck with that, you know, if we hadn't done the sinning we had done, we wouldn't be <clears> in the <throat> position we're in. Oh, my you God, know. we're going to... You know what? I'm not even gonna hang up. We have to have a talk. God damn it! We we uh, have. We have uh, it's not all about scripture, Judy. Judy, it's all about. Scripture. You're strong. You're a very <laughs> strong person. You have a great soul, and no matter where you're from, you're gonna help people try and get through anything that we're going through right now. Yeah. And the planet's gonna go through a lot of stuff. Absolutely. And, uh, People are going to reach out to you like you've never believed. There's going to be catastrophes this year beyond any other. So they're going to say, all of a sudden, they're just naming every little storm like a name or something or a super storm or whatever. Thousand-year storm. How many times did I hear thousand-year storm last year? But we knew this was coming, and it's only going to get worse. By 2021... It's un unreversible. Right. Well, it's could be tornadoes where you've never seen them before. Told us we're going to see things we've never seen before, and everything's going to intensify. Yeah, and that and that's the greatest part about the book you're reading that I don't read, and uh, it's amazing because it's going to happen. Mm hmm. It's happening now. Yes, it is. Uh, the plasma arc. Just alone lightning in our area. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Like last year, it blew up so many systems that I work on. It's getting so much worse. And I don't know if it's got a lot to do with the lightning killed so many people here by hitting the roof. Yeah, when I fun. put out the announcement on Mike's show that lightning would kill more people on Earth than it's ever had in all years he's ever known, he kind of giggled. But it did. It yeah. killed more people on Earth than ever before. It killed six like, of my neighbors. Oh, in did you predict that? Oh, oh yeah. No, it's going to get so much more worse than that. By 2021, we're doomed. They've actually made us. I think with doing these chemtrails, we're conductive now. To the point where it's looking for us. I think. I and I don't think that, I don't think they intentionally did that. No, I think what I they were trying to do was two things. Well, more than two, probably. But um, I I still have hope. I still think you're trying to save us. I still think that's what they're trying to do. I, I have hope, right? Like I think the elites that actually run the puppet show are trying to save us. I have hope, but you know they're not. Yeah, yeah. I think that they were trying to block the uh, UVC radiation, and I think oh, the UVC is so high right now. I know it oh is. Oh my God! But I think that was one it's of the brutal. things. And then I think they were also. I think they were trying to make a big battery in the sky, so that when when the sun isn't able. Well, the battery in the sky. You're right with the fake sun. That's to, to to get out the gamma radiation, which is absolutely harmful to us. Like it's bad beyond like seeing nothing. Once gamma touches you and your body, you go through a mutation. 
and you actually try to evolve from a species, you don't want the gamma radiation coming through, and they're trying to block that right now. I still have faith that someone cares about the people on the surface of the planet. Well, you know what I think is interesting is that when Moses asked God could he see him, and God said, no, you couldn't see me and live, that yeah. God is that energy that that energy that yeah. they're trying to block out from Earth now, because God's coming back. Yes, he is. And if you're Jewish, he's never been here yet. This will be the first time. That's not true. Not everybody Jewish feels that way. Oh, okay, well, just talk about my neighbor and how he feels, and he's Jew definitely 100% Jewish. I know Jewish, Jewish people that are Christians, so... Oh, well, they've they converted. In That's Christ. awesome. Yeah. I believe we have a lot of time left, Judy. And uh, there is no fear. Just be prepared. Have extra food for your family. And uh, I don't say store... Like, I live in the, the biggest freshwater place of the world. Um, like, it's thousands of feet deep of untouched water, spring water. So that's not something I would try to accumulate. Even if the earth was to dance on its on its axis, um, it would still be available to me. But uh, food-wise, I would say uh, definitely have something. Prepare for six months, apparently, currently to the, to the government. Six months? I don't know how much food you'd need for six months. I know had, how much uh, my family cost me today. <laughs> if we if if we had to store six months worth of food, if the if the world if the earth is going to be in that much trouble, yeah, it, that's what you need. It's and it's you have time it. though. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, most you of have us time. can't do that. Most of us cannot do that. No, but you have time. Uh, no, that's fine. And you know what? We need to take care take care of the people that didn't prepare for that, that are really great people that have the same mindset that you do. And that's what I'm doing in Canada. I'm retiring in about five months and I'm going to build a place and uh, where people can come from the States or Canada. I'm only 48 kilometers from the border and uh, you can just come and amalgamate and be part of the society and uh, eat free food. <laughs> Free hospitalization, you apparently. To, you say that now to uh, 100,000 people show up at your door. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I'm dealing with a big scale, so... Yeah, 100,000, I, I could definitely survive that, where I am, uh, with the resources we have here. Uh, I'll be honest with you, Judy. Uh, in Thunder Bay, where I live, um, we have enough food or grain to feed all of Canada for 30 years, right where I live, just with bread. It's a world port here where I live, and we have the biggest grain elevators in the world. Well, let's let's pray nobody uh, drops anything nuclear over there then. Well, no, I have enough away from that to survive um, the 100 or a thousand that you're talking about, but we actually have enough to feed the planet uh, where I live. We have the biggest grain elevators in the world, and we were always a nuclear threat if someone was to threaten the states because we have the biggest food supply in the world, more than Russia or any other big country. And no one knows that, but you know that now. Interesting. It is interesting. We can actually feed the U.S. for seven years straight from the city I live in. It's all elevators on the waterfront with huge storage of grain. It's nice. Nice to know it's there. If the catastrophe happened, I would run from there because everyone would be heading there. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I definitely would. I have enough uh, all my flowers are stored. <laughs> so, uh, any
Anybody have a question in the chat? Can you do a three-way call, or can you take calls while I'm on, or am I blocking someone? Um, I know Mike has a 10-minute limit. You're not putting a limit up. Yeah, I'm not putting a limit on people right now. Just like I, I let. I no, but you, you can do a three-way call, though, eh? Lou, do you want to call in? Come on. Can you do three-way? I'm not sure. I'm using a different version of Skype tonight. So okay. I, I'm not sure if I can or not. Okay. Call in, Lulu. It's we'll been see. done. It's something definitely your show's going to want uh, in the future, though, like the three-way call it, where you have two people talking and yourself. I, and, I plan on doing roundtables. I just got to uh, yeah. see if I can do it yeah. with the system that I have. No problem. We'll work with, with it together. Uh, I might amalgamate with you and uh, keep you connected to the North if you need, need to be. And... Uh, I can tell your soul is pure, and I want to uh, amalgamate with you. And uh, anyone wants information from the north? Yeah, we want information from around the world. It is, it, it, yeah. We get it, Lulu it, the best us. information can't hurt. Yeah, we get Lulu telling us what's going on in Australia, and uh, John <laughs> tells us Lulu, things about Lulu, today. you got to get out of Australia, yeah. Oh, my goodness, girl. It's a beautiful place. You know what, Judy? What disturbs me is the most beautiful places on Earth, the best vacation spots, the best places to live on Earth are all going to be gone in the next two years. All those places, like, remember Hawaii, best place to go, and how they had a little, little wee event last year? That's going to get so much worse. Um, it doesn't matter. Like, I love to live on the beach, love to live on the coast. That's going to be gone. <laughs> so it, it's really hurtful because where do you go to travel now? I have all the money in the world, and I could go anywhere I want, but nothing's safe. <laughs> well, it's definitely not. It's not going to be safe like, anywhere. No, but you only want to go for the week and get the hell out, right? Because I want to go back to Jesus. St. Thomas. I went there like 30 years really? ago. Really? Yeah. My I kids are there right now. I have two two kids, 26 year olds. Are. I have not forgotten it. It was, oh, uh, I fell in love with the beautiful. It's beautiful water. there. It is yes. beautiful there. Yeah. It is beautiful in St. Thomas. Um, uh, compared to where I am, though, my kids are in St. Thomas. Um, no, it's nothing, nothing compares to where I am, I'll be honest. You have to come see it. When you can look down a thousand feet in water and see a fish that you want to eat, uh, that's never seen bacteria or chemistry or industry. Uh, it, it's just amazing. Well, I, I have to disagree with you that it, it has seen it. In some form, it's a lot purer than other places, but because the, these uh, clouds and the air travels all around the world, so just like yeah, but we have the sands on the beaches to filter all that out. It's not affecting the north as it is all you uh, down south. You guys are getting pilfered with uh, with that stuff. Don't forget our water's deeper. It's two thousand feet out my door. Um, straight down, fresh water, clear. Well, just remember one and, time uh, the like, whole earth had fresh, clear water. Yeah, but all of it ended up in Canada. <laughs> it has every bit of it. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, we, we shouldn't have it all. I mean, we should share. I'm just, I'm just but, saying, yeah. unfortunately, all that nuclear radiation from... Uh, yeah, from we don't have any of that. And we're not downwind of that. Eventually that will reach you. You might be downwind downwind now, but I'm just saying. <laughs> and I'm no, it could never come our way, actually. <laughs> uh, I don't live 17 hours from a nuclear plant. Uh, if you drove all day for 24 hours, 
That's their closest plant in southern Ontario, Bruce Nuclear Station. That's the one that's going to take Mike out um, probably in about two years. Um, it'll radiate his entire New York City and everywhere you are. Um, well, there's 17 that are downwind with Mike. He's not in a good spot. He's a beautiful height spot of New York. And, uh, I mean, the apocalypse of people are going to try and kill him. But it's not a good spot. Like, he's hiding in the bushes and stuff. But it, it's not. He's too close to the masses. You have to get out. You have to get out of there. You know, Canada isn't too far from New York. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, but I'm just saying it is actually. I'm thousands of miles from New York, thousands of miles. Yeah, like if you were to walk thousands of miles, you would get to where I am from New York because I, I used to live in New York in Chicago. So I, okay, I know let me the ask you this: how far, how far is Fukushima from California? Enough to radiate two to two two point five percent, I believe. Um, it's going down now, though. It's uh, twenty three hundred kilometers. Well, you know, a check. you know it's affected the uh, the ocean and the. Uh, the sea Do you think it's not California, still affecting right? it? Yes. It actually ruined Alaska more, though. It's gonna. It, it really gonna, migrated. It really wrecked Alaska more. It didn't have the same effect on Alaska, even though the debris and stuff uh, from the tsunami after um, the uh, event. Uh, there was people's motorbikes showing up on the shoreline, and they were trying to reclaim them across the ocean. The Pacific Ocean's pretty big. Like you can't believe the stuff that showed up in California from that event. It's like amazing. People recovered their Harley Davidson motorbike in a capsule and stuff. It was amazing. Like, oh my God, that thing made it across, made it through all the islands, made it past Hawaii, and showed up on the beach of California. That's that's totally crazy. I can't even fathom that. Actually, when I owned, used to own a resort on one of the biggest lakes here, and I, I can totally depict whether. Well, that shouldn't be there, you know? Yeah. I just don't, you know, Scripture doesn't say that um, <laughs> there's only one. Don't go by Scripture, Judy. There's only Judy, we're going to get you away from Scripture. No, oh, no, brother, you will never do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. no, Judy. No, Judy. Now you sound like Satan trying to get me no, away from No, no, no. Don't don't read the scripts. Believe what's in your heart. It is in my heart. You're a great soul. You, you're a great heart. soul. And when I read it, the scripture didn't teach you anything. You're just a good person. Well, I'm a, you're good, just a good person. I'm a good person because the Holy Spirit has captured my soul. Uh, you're stronger than that. Mm -mm. Do you? Uh-uh. You don't no. need that. I don't need what the whole I think you started that. I am nothing without you, that. Well, eventually you might want to go there, but you don't need to do that every day. I think oh, you're a much stronger person. Oh no. I live that. every I live I, every I, day I know you now. are. I'm stronger now with okay. God in my life than I was without him, I can tell you that. And I was a tough cookie, you know. Uh, I faith. I, 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 I think faith is huge. I grew up in the streets, and I can tell you, I thought, I, you know, I was tough. I was mean. I was tough. I had been through a bunch of stuff. But I am a much stronger person now with God and the Holy Spirit guiding me than I ever was on my own. I believe you, Judy. Amen. And, and my love for people and my understanding and my patience now is, you know, I mean, I've done a 360 in life. Yes. That's important. I like you and what you stand for, and I totally know exactly what you're saying. 
and it, it's pretty much everyone's consensus of it. But uh, I don't. I just can't buy it. Well, I'm not forcing it on anyone, and I understand. No, but I, I can't. And, and I understand people having different thoughts and theories and and all of that because I once mm -hmm. had a lot of different thoughts and theories, but um, now I know things that okay. I know what I, I know what I know and and you know I can't I can't go back from that. Faith gets people through a lot of stuff. It's not even... I actually wrote a poem about faith, and, and I think I might read it tomorrow. I wrote it years ago when some uh, some friends of mine on AOL were arguing over religion. Yeah. And I wrote this, this yeah. quick response, and it ended up being a nice poem. So... But I think now, she wrote it now I'd like it. I'd read it. Uh, yeah, I'll put it up tomorrow. Now it's more than faith. It's, it's I know it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not even... You feel secure with it, and uh, that's great. But it's not for everyone. Well, you're tr true that, because Scripture says <laughs> that it's not. No. I know my destiny, and I know what I have to do. And I know the timeline, and there's nothing I can do to change that. So well, scripture says no one knows. Years. Time. Yeah. Well, we don't know when the dust's gonna blow off the sun, but we know when it did last, and the last, and the last, and the last, and that's what I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to say and when the when the, when the dust bowl blows off our sun, which happens. Quite regular. Nobody can prove that. Tell uh, me who person that was alive twelve thousand years ago to prove that. <laughs> well, I mean? well, when they all died, when they all died, I now have twelve people to confirm that. Uh, well, the best uh, geologic people in the world today. Huh? The ones that don't that believe in know, God. <laughs> no, they do. They do, Judy. Judy, I'm the only one out. Uh, they do believe in all that. They believe in what you're saying. Uh, I, I believe, probably I can believe what you're saying. But you got to have faith in yourself. If you don't have faith in yourself, um, you start there. You have to build from yourself. Um, for everyone, you, you do. You can't just believe in whatever. And, uh, and I totally agree with what you're saying. And... Many have gotten through many, many problems in their life with faith. And, and you really need a faith in yourself uh, and what you can do and how you can change things. Well, and see, knowledge is, the is key. That's, that's the difference now. I have faith in me now because I have faith in God's work. I didn't use that's that right. It's what got me. you through. That was your faith. And that's what got you through. But you did it. You did it. No, 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 no. God you did it. did it. Well, you believe that. But really, oh, Judy, you're that. stronger than you think. Creator, the Judy, creator you're that huge. Me, and whatever purpose he had yes. in mind for me is now yeah. coming to fruition. So You need to bring yourself up a level to help people. Well, the only way I can come up with a is through God's glory. and That's right. You'll get a sign or whatever it takes, but when it comes time to help people, you're going to have to move it up a level. It's going to be you, and you need to believe in yourself. You are God's creation, and you're greater than you ever can believe. You've been through much, and you're going to get through much more. That's just my opinion. I've uh, probably taken up your whole show here. Anyone else want to call in? Casey, I think Casey wants to call in. Okay. Casey, you want to call in? Want to do a three-way? You want to try one? Are you up for it? 
Did she type yet? She's typing. I don't know. You're typing like crazy. I can hear you typing. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Do you like, like to have like a typewriter or something? I can actually hear uh, things coming down and mechanisms going. Because <laughs> I'm only on a laptop and I don't have any. Uh, I don't. Have oh, a headset. So I'll be honest. I'm in an office. I in my office I have seven laptops running. I don't even know which one I'm connected to right now. To be honest with you, the, it runs a couple screens in the main office. Hello, Kitty. My cat's here. Not as big as Mike's. It's just way worse vicious. <laughs> it bites me every day. I'm sure, sure the cat likes me, though. <laughs> Why else would you bite me? <laughs> so, Judy, I don't want to ever affect your faith. Your faith has made you strong. Okay, let's see if we can connect three. Right off the bat on scripture. <laughs> <laughs> I know she was. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Judy. Hey, are you still there, Spencer? Oh, yeah. Spencer's on the line. I'll let you go. I don't no, want to interfere with your phone call. I was trying to do a three-way. Casey. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. No, we wanted to see if the three-way would work. Oh, I just had something final to say. Um, I'm leaving you too. Why? Well, anytime you have, um, you can't have third party or be involved in social websites when you're going so um, you hear Casey? to be involved. I can hear you, way you can hear me? In the future. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, honey. Say that again. It's it's just um, it's just something that was um, it's what I felt last night, and when I told you about last night. Kind of like it happened before it happened. I knew it was going to happen. It happened. I just waited for it to happen. Um, and um, it's it's been the story of my life, and I get that. But um, I just don't um, understand a lot of things. And uh, Christ said we wouldn't. And I get that. But I've got the armor of God on, and I'll be fine. Yes. But the things that I'm seeing in today's world is not cool at all. It's not cool. Well, it, any social media is poison. It's toxic. Unless you use it for good. Because well, I am a good girl. I'm so a very good girl. That's what we're doing. We're using it for good. So why are you leaving us? Well, when it's used against you for evil, that's when it's not good. Because there's um, there's repercussions. And um, I'm very upset because I don't get treated the way that I should, Judy. And um, it's not cool. It's just simply not cool when someone puts out rules that get they don't abide by them themselves. It's false character. And it's not cool. I've always been kind and respectful to people. And it's because of what I've been done, what's been done to me in my past made me want to be the good girl I am today because I've seen the ugliest of ugliest. And it's not a good world out there. There is pedophilia. There is human trafficking. There's families dying left and right from drugs. It's not cool for this world to be the way that it is, and that's why God's going to clean house. I know things that I know because of him. I don't care if people call me a liar. Jesus said that they would. They persecute us. So I have on the armor of God today. Okay? And I have to do what I have to do to take care of me. Because nobody else in this world is going to do it but me in this world. And this is what I have to do, Judy. So I just wanted to say, keep doing what you're doing and you're going to grow big. I'm not unsubscribing from any of the channels that I use to be subscribed to because I do like people, even if they don't like me. That's fine. I never ask for anybody to be my friend. I just wanted to reach out to people just to make them feel in some small part of their day 
that they were worthwhile. And that's what Christ did when he knocked on it door to door. He didn't have a YouTube. He didn't no. have Facebook. He knocked door to door just to show people love through the Father. And that's how everyone is going to be sucked off the face of this earth unless they get right by Christ. And it's that simple. It's not scary. It's not meant to be fear porn. My goodness gracious, he's prepared a kingdom for everyone. Why wouldn't you want to embrace it? That's right. I'm not worthy of heaven. Jesus Christ, I'm not worthy. I'm a sinner. I protect who I am. The same reason why everybody else out there protects who they are. Because we live in an ugly world. So I'll end it with this. Today I'm putting on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes. When I'm under attack. When I face trials or temptations. I'll be able to stand my ground. I stand firm with the belt of the truth. Buckled around my waist. With a breastplate of righteousness guarding my heart, my feet, ready to take the gospel of peace wherever God sends me. I also take up the shield of faith, which I can extinguish all flaming arrows of salvation. I grab hold of the word of the Spirit, the word of God. Sharp and true, Lord, be with me in the heart of the battle and grant me victory. I pray this in Jesus' name, Almighty. Amen. And I just want everyone to know that I'm a very good girl. And if you don't like me, that's fine. That's fine. But I don't have to attack others to make themselves feel good about themselves. I don't have to attack somebody for defamation of character, for slander. And I do study law. I go to freaking UC College. I'm not afraid to know who I am. But when you want to hide yourself, there's reasons. Because nobody knows my past. And I've got a big one. And it's big and ugly. Because I've had handlers. It exists in this world today. That's why I'm in the situation I'm in. It's time to armor up, people. Because Christ is coming. Oh, he definitely is coming. He's coming faster than people even think. So many people are so naive and so arrogant that he's going to knock people off their arrogant feet. I know this. I've seen this. And I don't take pride in that. I take glory to God because, you know, if you're not going to get it, and it's just something that's simple to do. It's just a simple choice. I don't need a platform. But I did think that people cared about other people. I really honestly thought that people cared about others. And every time I stick my neck out there for Christ, it's just like he said, you're persecuted. And it's a tough thing. I was sick all night last night. You verified that with me. I know what's going to happen. I don't know why I do. I am not no prophecy. I'm just Casey. I am nobody special. Well, I am as ugly as sin because sin is ugly. When you scratch the surface of it and you see what's underneath of it, it's not very pretty. But I thank God for my attackers. You know, the ones that I had in my youth and the, the ones that I had in my youth. They know who they are. But I thank them so much because with every beating, with every torture I went through, you know what I'm most thankful about? that I was praying for them because I saw the ugly, Judy, and I don't want to be like these people. These people, I thank them for being so bad because it made me not want to be like them. You know what I'm saying, Judy? Um, I've been through hell. Yeah. If I could touch your hand and you could see what I've been through, you fall to your knees. It's unfathomable what people do to children. Sister, I know all about it. I know all about it. So, if people want to attack me, go ahead. 
that's just another crown on my head in the glory of God. Because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I go on Mike Morales' channel and I tell everybody I love them too. You know? Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know what's going on with, and, and I don't want to know. Um, oh, no, you don't know. I would never disrespect anybody. Um, I would never invite you in that. I'm just telling you what's on my heart, what's no, on my I soul. Know, I know, I know. But what I want to say to you is uh -huh. that. I'm God, sorry. God loves you. We love you. Whatever that it is, don't let it deter you from being the Christian soldier that you are. And I'm nobody, Judy. I care I'm nobody. No, every, every one of God's creations is special, and you know that. You know that. You're special. I'm sometimes afraid to speak because the things that come to me, it's unreal. It's like, what? Are you kidding me? And then you tell your family that's surrounded about, you know, how, you know how they react around me? They cut their hands around their mouth. Because when I tell them that, I give them each note. And this is how I started it, to validate it. I gave them each note and I said, don't, don't open it up for a time. And promise me you won't. We're sitting at the table when I told you about Oklahoma. Or, sorry, Arkansas. God, I can't even think. Nebraska. Before it happened, and everybody opened up their notes around the dinner table, eating Skyline chili. Two of them couldn't finish their meals because they read. So I don't know why he's using me just for a time. It's not a prophecy thing. My God, I prayed on it. He told me it's just for a time. When he means for a time, it means that it's going to go away someday. I know that. But why I'm being used, I don't know. I wish to God it did, Judy. Because it's not easy being me. Just like everybody else within the moon self, can you honestly say that it's easy being you today in this world? Is it easy? It's definitely not easy. No, it's not. But I don't need to be. But let me let me let me let me say this. Um, matter of fact, my life has gotten harder and harder. Um, and it's going to get rougher. The last few, unfortunately. Years. Yes, I know. And, and and I I struggle daily, and but I am so thankful for what I do have, and what what I have now is I understand. First of all, nobody can suffer like Jesus suffered. Oh, amen. Um, yes, know, that's nobody true. Nobody will ever yeah. suffer like yeah, and he. Did that's what I meant by when you sin. Right. Yeah, that's what I meant when you sinned and you scratched just the little tiny surface of it. I mean, that was just the surface of how many sins he suffered for. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So my strength I'm right by Christ. My strength comes from that. And that's where your strength needs to come from. From that. No matter <laughs> well, but no matter how do you do that when the devil comes knocking at your door? Oh, we beat Satan up. Satan can't win. That's why I put on the armor today. Right. It's a, new, it's a new me. You can't let it's a Satan new me. win. I'm literally transforming. I'm literally transforming. I feel it in every ounce of my skin. It's happening. And you know what, Judy? I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. No, Please forgive fine. me. You're fine. But what people need to understand about this in this transformation state that we're in, which is the church change, we're now going into tribulation. And it's going to happen in April. But uh, people are just going to be mind blown. They're just going to be absolutely mind blown when they, they find out that everything that they thought was the truth is a lie. And it's nothing about the stupid crap that's going on today in politics or what Putin's doing or what Trump is doing. What's the truth that we've been not given is scripture. And yes, the Bible is scripture. I promise you that. I live by it. I've been highlighted numbers. I get, but I get highlighted numbers on so many ways, so many levels. And it leaves me a message. And, I, and Char has witnessed this with me. That's how I met Char. I didn't ask Char to be my friend. Char reached out to me one day in chat and said, you are the one I want to be a warrior with. It was something spiritual, you know. Everybody else that I reached out to, 
And I put my phone number out there in the chat, and I thank God for the mods because the moderators are like, oh, God, no, don't do that. Don't put that out there. And I'm like, well, what's the harm in that, you know? Oh, geez, did I find out what that was right away. But you know what? The, the, some of the people that's reached out to me, I'm very thankful, you know, very thankful because they took that time out of their precious day to reach out to me, you know, and that was cool. The people that I do talk to do know me, and that's all that matters to me. But I have to bow out gracefully to YouTube. And this is my bow. This is the final curtain because I don't need it. I try to use it as a platform to care about people, um, to be the cupcake on somebody's icing, whatever. Um, no, I'm just Casey. I ain't nobody freaking special. I don't have clean mouth. I don't, you know what I'm saying, Judy? I, I just, I'm just appalled. I'm just obligated, mind-blowingly appalled at how people disrespect people when they just simply just try to reach out a hand and care for you. It doesn't involve sex. It doesn't involve making out. It doesn't involve fondling somebody. Yeah, that's sick. Absolutely freaking gross. And everybody that I talk to, they know it because I told it to them. We better get right with Christ, Judy. That's the point, because it's coming soon. And everybody all across time, through the 70s, through the 60s, through the 50s, the 40s, I'm sure at every uh, generation, every 20 years, they thought, this is the end, this is the end, this is the end. Well, I've not lived very long and can tell you and validate it. He's coming. And is it going to be the end of evil? Yes, it will. And then Jesus will reign a thousand years. And he's already marked those. And ask daughter of the Most High. She's had visions of doors. If you look up the scriptures, look up doors. What Bible verses talk about doors? Better People better start knocking on heaven's door because it's coming. And I thank God that it is because I'm so done with this earth. I know I won't survive this stuff. I'm put into place at a specific time, but I was promised I can battle up with evil, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it head on. It's what I'm supposed to do. I'm sorry, Judy, but you're a beautiful soul. I thank you for the platform, and I simply just love everybody. It's that easy. Life is not hard. It's people who complicate it. And I've had people come to me and talk bad about other people, but you know what? I don't care. That's how that person feels. Just because that person feels that way about somebody else doesn't mean that that's the image that I have of that person. Do you understand? Oh, absolutely. I guess, I guess I'm messed up. I guess I'm stupid. Because, you know what? So things might be true about what that person is trying to say about that other person. But it's not the person that I know until they do me wrong. No? That's why I support all until somebody does me wrong. And then I, I, I do. I, I'm so bad I even support the person that does me wrong, you know? Um, because, yeah, I used to do that. Because, <laughs> as far as that. Uh, go ahead. Because, I'm sorry, go ahead. Because I want to try to help them, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. get right. So if they're, you know, it's just like I had a, my dog, well, I'm not going to say who. Okay, I had someone in my life that was really, really kind to me, but they weren't kind to other people. And I looked mm -hmm. at them one day and I said, you know, this really tells me who you really are. It's how you treat other right. people, not me, because you have an ulterior motive in treating me kind, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm looking at you soul to soul, and it's not very pretty right now, you know? So I yeah. had to, you know, part ways because I, I was in an agreement with how they treated other people, and right. they wouldn't let me help them, you know? So... I just had to step away and, you know, pray for and that's, them. Yeah, I get your girlfriend. Amen. I used to be that way with my abusers. Now I'd even pray for them as they were doing it. It was so ridiculous to even, if you could visualize that child in that long, ankled nightgown, you know, rolled up in a ball, yeah. praying. 
and sometimes words came out loud, you know, depending on the blow. Yeah. And then you hug them. Just put your hand around their neck and hug them. Well, I, say, I, I didn't forgive do you. that. I didn't do that then because I didn't have God in my life then. You know, so I held on to anger for a long time. And he came to me when I was five. And then, like, I finally forgave some people, you know, <laughs> just years ago. So and, just please uh, forgive me if I've offended anybody on anyone's platform. That was not my intentions. My intentions was just to care. And that is very real. Very real. And it's exhausting me. I mean, you don't feel like you're getting in return. I'm not going to do like I did back in the day and try to fix things. Because when I did try to fix things, it only got worse. Sometimes you just got to walk away. You can still support and walk away. You can still pray. You can still hope. Yeah. And I got all of that on my spot. I do. I just don't like to be treated meanly. That's all. Especially when I've done nothing to nobody. So God bless, and I'm glad um, I got the chance to be on your show. People might see me from time to time on Mike Morales, but it'll be on a computer. You can't, like, uh, be somebody. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know. We talked about it tonight. Um, he says, uh, he, my dad monitored shows and would be like, I can't even get into the damn chat on my, uh, my, uh, PC. And I'm like, well, I, I think that's just the phone thing. I don't know much about technology, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. So I might like, you know, just watch him or something. I don't know. And it's not that I'm giving up. It's just that I'm bowing out gracefully because I've been hurt. And when people hurt you, sometimes you just got to walk away, you know? Because see, it lives in you every day. I mean, just say, just think about how Jesus is. Let me give you an example. I mean, oh, actually, let's just take this to God because he was the first. Think about everybody that he created, right? And everybody around the world has questioned whether he is real or not. You know, not fair and discernment. You know, it's everyone's choice. He gives you that choice, you know. But when when the creator creates you and you don't live right by him, I mean, just think of how, just, just think of the burden that that man's carrying on his shoulders today. We couldn't even begin to imagine, you know. So what little bit that I handle on this, there's no way I'd ever work God's job, you know. <laughs> oh, dear Christ, no. Because I don't think I could make a decision whether someone would have the right to be in heaven or hell. I don't think I could do it. I'm like you. I'd be like, oh, well, you can have this second chance. <laughs> I think that's what he did with Lucifer, and he saw what happened to him. Well, to, you know, yeah, I was thinking about that um, yesterday and today at work. And, you know, you ever watch those martial art movies and the, um, the teacher never teaches, he teaches them a lot, but never teaches them everything because he has to be the master of it. So can you imagine how he felt when he gave Satan all these powers and then Satan decided he was jealous because God created man and gave man the earth to rule over and so the battle is between them two I don't honestly think that God is going to send his children to hell even the, sinners, even the sinners I just don't I just don't believe that part I believe no, I, no, that's not anything I said. I never said like no, children. I didn't okay, say you did. like little kids, like little kids, they're all saved. Right. Well, I mean, scripture tells us that. Yes. Yeah, I didn't say what I'm saying isn't implying. Oh, you're that not you saying that I said that. that. Okay, I got right. you. Right. What I'm saying is the problem I have with some of the uh, preachers and the way they teach the hell and brimfire, you know. <laughs> Um, cause I was taught a lot of things 
in my childhood from different people and you know it's not even it's not even scripture and but they they all had me believing that if there is a god you're going to hell and you know i was a little too young to question it and so i i believed all of that for a long time mm -hmm. So I have an issue with some of the preachers, the way they, t some teach, hey, um, wait, I got to pronounce his name right, because I messed it up last night, um, Avenue, Stabby, hey, Stabby, how are you? Oh, it's Stabby out there, yeah. hey, Stabby. Yeah, Avenue, I remember. <laughs> so did I say it right, Stabby? <laughs> yeah, Stabby. <laughs> he yeah, he's know. always he's always been kind to me out there in chat. You know, he he says hi and stuff, and he's just cool. Char, she's just a gem. And Judy, you always acknowledge me too, and Spencer and Lulu, and you know, I just thank God for the people that at least you know like me back. You know, it's pretty cool. Because I will never, even if somebody, like, talks about me, I'll never talk bad about that person because people talk, people that's, talk that's, bad. that's not people, who I am. Right, I understand that, and and I'm not either. And people talk bad about me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is, you know. It's an part, everyday life. Yeah, that is just part of this <laughs> world. And, you know, there's different reasons that, for you know, people do do it for different reasons and um sometimes they're just misguided uh sometimes it's satan you know in the mix sometimes um you know there's there, there's different reasons for it but my thing is i'm still gonna be who i am yeah know? No matter how, and that's why I think you're going to be successful. How, no you're going to be how, very successful. No matter how someone comes at me, I remember what Jesus went through to prove to well, us. Prime that, example: Look at George. You handled George brilliantly. And George, you were so kind and, to him. And George ended up being a really nice person that cares about me. And it's because people. of you. It's and, because you of know, you. I was like, why is this guy doing this? And you know, <laughs> I just had. It, like I said, it was, you know, just a feeling I had that this isn't a really bad person and he doesn't really feel what he's saying, you know? Right. And, and yeah, he's a, he's you a heard nice him guy. talking loosely. Huh? You heard, you heard the same thing I did. I heard him talking loosely when he was saying all those bad things. It was just a bunch, a bunch of rubbish. You know, it was going so fast that he couldn't be thinking about the words that he was saying. And you knew it wasn't heartfelt. It right, was just right. rubbish. You know what I mean? So I felt the same thing you did. Oh, this dude, you know, he's just taking his something out on somebody else. You know, he's just betting, you know? Yeah, yeah I don't think it was a personal. I didn't take it personal anyway, you know? I mean, he did say a couple of bad things about me, but you know what? It didn't strike me like, a, you know, like you. It, it wasn't nothing. I was just like, whoo, I'm just going to pray for that person harder. You know what I'm saying? And you did too. And uh, we, we brought him. We brought, well, you brought him home. Wait, you did. You brought it. You brought it home. And I commend you for that because that was powerful, how you handled that, you know, and you let him know he's loved and cared about and welcome on your show and you got another subscriber. That's wonderful. You know, I'm just going to miss it all. Well, you, you don't have to. We're here. Oh, I know, I know, I know. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you just know you got to do what you got to do kind of thing. And, and you know, look, everybody in here in this in, this, in my environment lives in bubbles. I mean, my whole community, I'm really well known for my, for my whole community, whether it's, you know, climbing up a ladder and cleaning out gutters or, hey, my God, what kind of flowers did you get? I always go the extra mile. Okay, well, this is where I got them. You know, and if they're elder, I'll be like, you know what? I'm getting ready to drive up the lows, so let's, you know, I'll pick up a flat. Then you come and you plan them. Where you want where you want me to stick them? And they're just looking at you like, what? You know what I'm saying? It's just, that's how everybody, I just need to get out of, I need to get out of my bubble with people, you know, and I started doing that the spring of last year. And now I can feel myself going back in that bubble again, and I don't like that. 
because I'm closing myself off to the world again just because somebody hurt me, you know. It, that's how powerful it is when someone strikes at you. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy, sir. Yeah, I've seen the karate kid. You know, it's in my dad's library, you know, from when he freaking grew up in a certain era or whatever you want to call it. But, like, uh, I don't know, life's just hard, and I just can't wait to go home. I think I was saying that to either Chloe Chloe or Lulu. I think it was Chloe Chloe. We were just, I heard her thought, say in the chat, I'm, I'm just ready to go home. Well, I didn't know she meant home home or home home. I took it to like home home. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have felt that way. Um, I was feeling that way really bad last year. And then, um, I don't know, something happened and, and I was like, I need to be here. Just like, you know, I'd rather not be here when, when all the suffering happens. But I was like, Lord, if you know, if there is a, a rapture prior to um, everything, then leave me here. I don't want to mm -hmm. suffer, but I will if I can help right. just one more person come to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, That's if I can I help am. people, if I can help others get through it, then leave me here. You know, maybe I can earn some brownie points because, you know, I got a lot of sinning to make up for. <laughs> God bless you, but he don't work like that. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> he already knows where you're going to be, Judy. I think it's a very special place. I really feel that. Because I can tell by the way you're talking. You always question it. So if I could give you a person that I follow online. And uh, it's a little Chinese dude, and, and uh, he does go by King James Version Bible, and I don't care what the uh, Google says about, you know, King James Version all day. We're a bunch of pedophiles, blah, blah, blah. No, I knew King James Version before that came on Google. And, uh, yeah, seriously, it's a, it's a bunch of crap. But uh, his name is Dr. Gene Kim, and Gene is spelled G-E-N-E, -E, and Kim is like it sounds, K-I-M. And if you put into the search on YouTube, um, people question whether they're saved or not every day, even though that they know that they're right by Christ. But once you're saved, he don't go back on that because he knows how many times you're going to sin. And uh, you're never going to be unsaved once you're saved because he knows that you're still going to slip up and stumble just like everybody else does. But please, dear heart, don't ever question if you're worthy because you are, sister, you are. I really feel it. You're a good person. Well, you yeah, really are. I know that anyway. Jesus Jesus um, taught, and, and th this is what makes me, this is what bothers me about people that, like, okay, we, we've we got the Old Testament, and we, we've uh -huh. got the laws and the rules, and, and definitely we should live by the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is so simple to live by. And it's, you know, but God also taught us how to eat healthy, you know, mm -hmm. if, we, if we had stuck with that, if we had stuck yeah. with God's plan, it wouldn't be this cancer and um, heart disease and high cholesterol and diabetes and all the stuff that we have now, you know, if we had stuck with God's plan. And so anyway, I get mad at, well, I get upset or disappointed or whatever with these people that scare people away from Christianity because they teach from the Old Testament. And now the Old Testament has value, but Jesus came to straighten people out because the, the look how the, the Pharisees were teaching um, from the Old Testament, but being hypocritical and then being too harsh on people and making rules that weren't that weren't there, like when he saved the man on uh, the Sabbath, mm -hmm. and you know they wanted to to stone him to death then for saving a man on the Sabbath, and he said, you know, like if one of your one of the uh, sheep or cows or whatever was out in the, you know, wouldn't you go get it on the Sabbath, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how am I wrong for? I think he made a blind man see, or I don't. I remember which miracle it was. He worked. He did that on that Sabbath. But you know, so some of these preachers nowadays remind me of those Pharisees, where they would have condemned Jesus for things, you know, 
But he came to teach yeah. us a message of love and that God Amen. is love and that we should love each other, we should help each other, and we should feed each other, and that we know Satan is here. It's a spiritual battle, you know? So it's like mm -hmm. someone, I made a comment. There was this little girl that died. The house exploded, and um, it was... Uh, it was on some news channel, and she was videotaping like she was live on Facebook when it happened. Uh -huh. And, you know, then her phone went dead. And um, I, I said, I, I comment, I pray for everyone to have peace beyond understanding, right? Because I know it's mm -hmm. difficult when you lose someone. You know, even as a Christian, we miss the person. And and it's difficult, but to know that they're okay, you know, there's too mm -hmm. many people that have had, uh, they call it near death experiences, NDEs, but it's actually a death experience or a sleep wow. experience, you know, and they have met God, they've met Jesus, well, no one's seen God, but. Right, they, they, they don't. Right, they all say the same thing, like he goes up forever and ever and ever, and you can tell there's a bright light, but you never get to see God. He's sitting on the throne, but you never see his face. But right. they same Jesus. And they all come back, and no matter what part of the world they're in, they all come back with the same story. You know? Yeah. I mean, it varies a little, but it's all the same. They go through this light, and then they feel great, and everything's vibrant, and... The music so much better, the colors, the flowers, and the love they feel, you know? Yeah. And there was a brain surgeon, a neurologist, neurosurgeon. He died. And mm -hmm. um, he came back to life. But it, so when he died, he met, he didn't know it was his sister he had never met because she had died. And so when he ended up, he ended up, when he came back to life, he saw a picture of her, and it changed him forever. Because at first, he was like, well, maybe I was hallucinating, and, you know. But being a neurosurgeon, he knows, he ended up with, um, darn it, I know the disease so well, too. The brain, the uh, brain disease where, um. Dementia? No, 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 no. No, he wasn't even that. Demolination? No, it was, um. Don't, it was an infection that went to his Alzheimer's? brain. Alzheimer's? No, it was an infection that went to his brain. Um, darn it. Anyway, um, his whole brain was dead, you know, and he, so he explains it all medically. And he's like, there's, you know, there's no way, there was no parts of my brain that were working that could have, you know, I could have hallucinated, you know, or been in a coma and dreamed or any of that. And, um, you know, besides all the, the scientific evidence that was there at the time that his heart had stopped, his, you know, he had no um, brain function on the uh, all the monitors and whatnot. And anyway, so he when he went to uh, heaven, when he had his little visit to heaven, the, the girl that greeted him, right, and, you know, told him everything was okay, but it wasn't his time yet was his uh, sister that he never met that had died. And he had, um, so after he came back to life and, and, and he, you know, he was changing his life around and he met some of his family. He was at one of, one of their houses and he saw the picture and he's like, who is that? I said, that's who I've seen in heaven. They're like, that's your sister that died. Wow. That was just one story. Um, there's so many of them. I did a lot of research on NDEs. And then they've had hospitals where they, um, they're they actually hooking people up now to these monitors, um, especially like when they do heart surgeries, you know, surgeries where people a lot of times don't make it. And so mm -hmm. they're doing all these studies now because they know these NDE, NDEs are real. These stories of heaven. One lady, when she came back to life, she was dead for a long time. She told them she saw a red shoe on top of the hospital roof, right? Uh -huh. 
She told the doctors all the surgery they, you know, everything they had done. They said blah blah blah, and she told them about a red shoe on the roof. Well, this one lady, being a Christian, is like, I've got to see if this is real or not, you know. And sure enough, so they had the uh, maintenance people go up and unlock the uh, door to the roof, and they went up on the roof, and there was a red shoe up there. And this is like wow. a hospital, twenty some stories high. There's no way. You know, that lady laying laying there getting open-heart surgery knew that. Exactly. And, um, but I'll tell y'all what, I'll tell you a good movie to watch. It's called Heaven is Real. Yes, it's a very good one. And, you know, at the beginning story. of that, see, see Colton, story. yeah, Colton is very real. Yep. Yes, he is, um, including pen palling, you know, back and forth um, between our church with him. Um, he sends in, you know, very inspirational things and, you know, tells us a little bit about his life still in Christ. But um, at the beginning of that movie is a real painting, and um, it's by Akiana Cremier. Right, right. And, and Akiana, she got to visit heaven, and um, I love how the Lord uses her, too, yeah. because even though in her point in life now she's a young adult, um, he doesn't use her at this time right now, and he told her, you know, that's how, that, that's how he comes to people. Like, that's why I can't say prophet, because the prophets are in the churches. And those are the ones that were supposed to deliver scripture to the people. You know, when you're used at the time, you're called watchmen or, you know, like Akiana Cremier was. He'll, he'll get, it's kind of like a heed. He gives you this heed. And it's something that you feel in your spirit. It's like it pushes you back. And it makes you question a lot of things. Even it makes you question your faith sometimes. I have to be totally honest with you. Because you are human too, you know? And uh, it's just, it's just I can't put it into the words. I think maybe Akiana put it perfectly when she said that she was concerned that God was not using her. And she came from a family of atheists, girl. And they never talked about the Bible to her, even when she was a child. And um, he was visited by her and said... I'm not going to use you, you know, at this time. And she even asked him, well, when are you, when, you know, I, I, when are you going to use me again? She kept praying on it and praying on it and praying on it. She hasn't heard anything, you know what I mean? So, but she did have a sense in her spirit, though, thank God, that there was going to be times that she just keep doing your gift because the gift was given to her for a reason and just do what's in your heart. He gave her that opportunity to use her own art. And he said, put them away in boxes, you know, so so all the world cannot see. So she literally has these art cases that are wooden cases that have locks on them that she hasn't even looked at, you know, from the time that they dried and were put away. And then every now and then she, you know, wants to take a peek at these, but she listened to what he said. You know, you don't, not until you, she gets confirmation, because she changes her paintings up all the time. It could be, for example, like this moose out there in a grassland. And then she'll paint that moose perfectly. But then she'll see something beyond that. So she'll paint over that moose, and it'll be like a little canoe of Indians. And then that will be the painting that, you know, appears for her to finish. Then she'll paint over that, and it'll be a whole new landscape. And it's like she's just so spiritually searching for what's in her heart for her to deliver. doing. Yeah, I think that's what we're all doing is soul searching. We're looking inside our souls to how we can be inspirational to the world in our own time. And that's why we're used at a time such as this, you know. And I guess that's why I became me, you know. Right. And that's why Judy became Judy and so on and so forth. You know what I mean. So I'm just very blessed. I met a lot of really good people and I'll hold that forever in my heart. Now, no, no human can take that away from me. So, I'm just glad I had the time when I had the time. You guys are so sweet. Very sweet people. So, on that note, I'm going to let somebody else call you, or you can go to bed since you work so vividly hard. And um, uh, I actually wanted to expound on something else, so if someone else calls in, maybe we'll talk about that. Okay. okay. Um, I want to tell you that I just want you to take a deep breath and maybe take a couple of days off if you need to and um, just, you know, pray and ask God what is his will for you and what, you know, because I'm sure it's not for you to disappear from everybody and you have a good spirit 
And like I said, I don't I don't want to get involved in whatever whatever the the issue is. Um, if you want to talk to me, I'm I never even knew there was an issue. I want... never knew there was an issue until last night. I felt it in my gut, and and then it was said to me, and he, and he said, "Buckle up, buckle up. Now is your time to put on the armor of God." So, and I've never, I'll tell you the truth, man, I've never read, and I've, there's lots of things I haven't read in the Bible, but that was highlighted to me last night, and it's called, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever read, you know, scripture and everything like that, but it's literally called the Armor of God Prayer, and when I read it, actually what inspired me was Char's video, and um, the images that I saw on her skies, it's definitely everything in scripture yeah, of how the four angels share, come and stuff. Wait till I share my images. I keep saying this, and I've just got to get. Time. I hope you do. I have so many thousands. It is. I mean, and I mean like ten thousand pictures that I have been. Ooh, cool. I have been snapping pictures every day for three years, day and night. When I see stuff, and I'm like, oh my goodness, am I really seeing this? And that's why I said the unveiling is more than some people think it's like, you know, seeing which people are evil and what they're doing and whatnot. It's way deeper than that. We are seeing demons in the sky. We are seeing angels yeah. in the sky. We are seeing the spiritual war. We're definitely oh, seeing yeah. it. And, yeah, so when, you know, when I look at her pictures, I'm like, yeah, I know she's seeing it because, you know, I've been taking pictures of it for three years now. It's, some of this stuff is... And I actually had a gut feeling one time I was driving, I was going out of town, I don't know, I think I was going to see my friend in North Carolina, and or I was going to Georgia to see my granddaughter, one one of the two, and I looked up, you know, I don't like clouds, right? I, clouds used to annoy me because it got in the way of the beautiful sky, or the sun, the moon, the stars, you know. Oh. So, so anyway, I'm driving, I'm driving on the highway on I-85, and I'm seeing things in the sky, and, and I, so I made a comment to God. I'm like, God, you know, I've seen almost every animal this, this past week in the sky. You know, mm -hmm. like dogs, cats, whales, um, oh my gosh, you name it, and I saw it. I said, so if I see a Tasmanian devil, I'm going to know that I'm seeing, like, the souls of the animals going, or I'm seeing something, you know, something's happening. <laughs> and the next day I saw a Tasmanian devil, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to ask anything else, because that's a little scary. <laughs> well, not scary, yeah. you know what I mean, it's, it takes you back a notch, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yes, I do. And well, I guess at first I, I, at first I was a little scared. Like that day I called my daughter... <clears throat> three years ago and told her, I don't know what's going on, but our atmosphere is changing. And I got this, you know, this, this message in my soul that we're looking at, you know, we're looking at what scripture told us to look for. Mm -hmm. And, um, but since then I found peace with it. Tabby says, Judy has, may God bless you scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> not a science paranormal or news based chant right faith based right right and I mean the um, science and the paranormal and, and all that works in it but all of it to me relates back to scripture everything going on in the world yeah it does and I love it that Char gave me one of the greatest compliments not that long ago. And um, I had gone over a piece of scripture with her, and she said that she liked the way that I kind of, um, not, I mean, she's very intelligent. And I just wish she, she, she already knows. I mean, she knows so much. Sure. But she said I said it, I could make, I don't know her exact words, but when I read a certain part of it to her, I could make her understand at the time that we're in now, how it's how it's relating to now. And it's so cool that she's finding these things on her own because she's so in tune with her spirit. It's amazing. I mean, she's infectious. Her laugh, her her smile, and she's just wonderful. She's just amazing. You know, and I'm so glad that she reached out to me that day out there in Mike's channel, you know. He's got a wonderful channel with so many good people. 
And, you know, he built himself upon his own, just like you're going to build yourself upon your own. You know, and I love that he called into the show the other night and gave his support. And, and I'm sure, you know, he's going to be like, you know, telling you little tricks and trades and stuff like that to build you up. And, and that's what we're all supposed to do. So he's on track and everybody seems like that they're on track. But I just want people to just not slip off that track, you know, and just go straight like a locomotive into those gates because everybody has the choice and that's what the choice for. You know, let me tell you this. It was also shown, too, that a lot of people think, and I agree with you. I think you said this best, Judy. You did. You said that working in the bar and everything and you don't believe that Jesus closes himself, you know, off like that. I think I think it's going to be. When he comes and he's going to appear to everybody, and if he doesn't appear to you in person, his angels will be set forth, and they're, they're the ones to guide the light because they are the angels of light. So they will guide you to where you need to go. So how I think it's going to roll, I mean, I don't know this for certain, but it's just something that I thought of when you said this. Um, he's going to come to people in, in, in their time and say, you know, you know, come, you know, so it's going to be your choice whether you come or whether you stay behind. If you stay behind, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing. Maybe it's because, like you said, you kind of want to be, you know, not suffering, but there's still something yearning in your heart that's saying, oh, but maybe I got another person to help. That's how you get the crown of glory, I believe, because when that's what we're supposed to do. Like my thing, what I saw I was here in all this mess. I wasn't in no rapture. I was still here in this mess. And I was literally going over to that person in my dream and, and saying, repent, repent, you know, and that person couldn't even not even hear me in my dream. And I was like, I touched that person, but like I went through like on that shoulder, I, but I moved the clothes. I, I absolutely could see me when I came out. So, like, I can't put it into words how that dream. It was just so weird to me how you can go through that person, the physical, but yet the material part, I could move. Does that make any sense? I was like, what? You know? It was just a wild dream, you know? But, yeah, if that dream comes true for me, I will be scared. I know I'm going against, you know, how I should be. Fear no evil for that with me. But I am human. And if I am stuck in all this chaos, whoo. I just hope I get one on board, you know, to say, I repent. Okay, Jesus, I surrender. You know what I mean? You know, I'm kind of like a, you. I had a dream about Satan once, and you just reminded me of it. <coughs> oh, gosh. I hope that's not a bad sign. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I had forgot about that dream. <coughs> in, in the beginning of the dream, I was really scared <coughs> that Satan was in the room. <coughs> And then I was uh -huh. like, wait a minute, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. <laughs> That's what Char says. In the name of Jesus Christ, demons be gone. Yep. <laughs> and he was gone. And you hold up your right hand and you say it with all your heart. And I just he said more times than not, they're gone. <laughs> I, it, I was repeating it to you. <laughs> <laughs> was you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See how alike everybody is that they just give it a chance, whether you be man, woman, or child, we're all alike. That's the that's the part that I was saying, you know, life isn't hard that people complicate it. I mean, it's a very easy thing. Life is just so simple. Especially when you help people, you know, like, you know, I, I was inspired by a person that paid for somebody, you know, and uh, you know, came up in the at the window, that meal was free. And, you know, I'm just trying to pay it forward as much as I can when I can do oh, I can, I you know. Pay it forward. Yeah, that used to be my favorite saying, pay it forward. Yeah, and it, it's real. It really does. You see it come back. You know, you really do. I mean, it comes in so many so many different ways. It just depends on how you interpret that blessing, you know. And, you know, I hear, you know, dad bitching about the bills. Oh, damn it, you know, this and this and that. And this has got to, you know, calm down and that's got to calm down. And uh, I'll be like, have you have you stopped and thank God today for what you got? <laughs> you know? Right. And I'm not, a material, I'm not a materialistic person at all. Like, I mean, I'm a tomboy and most of my stuff is blue jeans. And, you know, I don't got to have it. I do got to have my bag, though. I had one bag. And it's uh, it's a Michael Core. And I saved up a lot to get it, and I'm blessed that I got it, but I'll have it. So probably till the day I die, diesel pizza, it's, it's uh -huh. out. It's made made good, you know? So, but you know I, yeah, funny? materialistic. I was a huh? brick 
I was a brick mason and a bodybuilder, and, and I love to fix things, lawn mowers. I fixed some stuff at work yesterday. You know that, you know. I'm just, I just, I like fixing things. I like fixing computers. I can remove viruses. Yada yada yada. And um, wow. And I like fixing people. I wanted to be a child psychologist. I made dean's list in psychology. But anyway, uh -huh. um, never got to finish because I got married and my my. My stepdaughter got sick with leukemia, and then, you know, the whole oh, thing. But, well, yeah, but see, God put me there at that time because those children needed me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't regret any any of that. I don't regret right. any of the it's things. Just, I'm just saying it had to be a tough thing to go through right. it, with it, your child, it, you know? Yeah, that was, but, you know, <laughs> um. I guess God gave me the wherewithal, even even when I wasn't serving him or thinking about him like I should have been. Um, he gave me the wherewithal to get through a lot of things in life. And I'll give you an example. Um, I've been on my own since I was 12. And um, I used to think, oh, I was, you know, pretty smart, you know, that I was able to get a job and survive. And, you know, I had to lie about my age, of course. But, you know, and I ran into issues being so young and out there. But um, when my daughter was 12 years old, and I, so I thought God had abandoned me because I used to pray for a family that would love me. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of thought God had abandoned me. And then when I looked at my daughter when she was 12 years old, I said, you know what? God didn't abandon me. I mean, I didn't get what I asked for, but he gave me, not at that time anyway, see, because I consider everybody my family now, everybody in the world, that you know what I mean? And so, but at the time... I thought he had, but when I looked at my daughter when she was 12, and I was like, there's no way that innocent young child could live out there on her own. You know what I mean? So yeah. he gave me the wherewithal to get through what I got through. And there was, you know, a reason for it, because I can recognize pain in people, um, e even in their voice, even if I don't know them or see them, I can recognize pain, and I can, re I can recognize their need. So I went through the things that I went through for that purpose. Yeah. And I mean, I could expound on that some other time, you know, but God is amazing. At, you know, so sometimes we go through things and it's simply for the lesson. And, it, you know, like whatever you're going through right now, there's a lesson in it and you might not get it right at this moment. That's why I said just take a few days and take a deep breath, say your prayers, which I know you do. And ask God to shed the light on it, on what, just think about, I love this, the WWJD, what would Jesus do? And that's what I try to think of. That's how I try to guide myself now on any, any trouble that I run into or, you know, whatever. I, 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 just, I, just, I just think that it's because I got to go because like it, it, it train wrecked me last night. And I forget what time at the night it was that I talked to you. I know it was before midnight. I know it wasn't that late at night, wasn't it? I don't know. But I, I, I knew I, I knew it was going to happen, and uh, so I did pray on it. And I do have my confirmation, and I'm going to be used for something wonderful real soon. I do know that it's coming. It's coming around. It's coming. And um, I just, uh, I think my whole thing for it is that when somebody hurts you, you don't ask for more, you know? And I, I almost kind of feel like, I don't know, I just, because I don't give up on people, you know, I don't, I don't, you can pretty much shit on me and I'm still going to be your best friend. That's this, I mean, I even had a friend on the phone say it out loud, you know, my dad said it out loud, how am I, you know, you tell, tell, tell Char how people treat me. And he literally told her. I've been treated very, very poorly by a lot of people, and that's why I don't believe in, like, having significant others or, like, it's just people are just, I've lost kind of hope in, in humanity as far as how they're going to be with me, and that's okay. I'm cool with it, you know, but I just don't, I just don't want Casey. more pain. You do understand? I don't. Casey, I understand that. I don't think I could endure it. 
what I'm saying it's is not fair. Okay, you put on the armor of God, the full armor of God. Mm -hmm. Now you're a soldier for Christ. So, in that, take the pain. But to battle things within my own realm, meaning my neighborhood, I got to get out there in the community and help more. Well, if if that's your calling, that's your calling. I don't know if it is, but I'm just going to try it. No, you know. Well, well mm -hmm. ask God. See, because I've been I've been asking God for a few years now. Like, what am you know? I want I want you to use me, and I want to be able to help people. But I don't know what to do, you know, with my yeah. limitations. What can I do with, you know, he's, he's blessed me with a few gifts, but I haven't been able to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I haven't been able to utilize them to uh, the best of my ability. At least I feel that way. And... You know, so I've been feeling kind of stagnant. In it's kind of like you just don't go borrowing trouble, you know. You just don't invite it. No. I don't, I don't want any trouble. But I don't, I don't run from it anymore because I try to find, this is just me personally. Um, I have been through enough in life. I've got enough me too. life lessons that, see, I take, if, if all the things that I've been through, if I just took them and closed myself off, then I suffered for, you know, I suffered in vain. If I take it and use it and turn it, turn someone else's life into something positive because of that, then I didn't suffer in vain. I suffered. I learned a lesson that's valuable to help someone else. There's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be contradictions. There's always going to be tension. It's going to pop up. But there's always ways to make it better. Yeah. So you have to remember you're a child of God, which means you're special. And Unlike Mike in that era, I don't like compliments. It's like I don't even feel that about myself. See, I was. When you've been treated the way I've been treated, girl, God bless America. I'm trying to tell you, <sighs> I can relate. <laughs> People hurt you for a reason. They do. Um, did you forget? They got their this, own reason. Wait, 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 wait. Did you forget that Satan was a ruler of this earth? Yeah. I know he is. Okay. So sometimes it ain't... Mm. Uh, sometimes it's not the person doing it. It's Satan in disguise. You know, it's like not the person intentionally doing it. It's whatever's going on in their life. We'll, we'll use George for an example. Whatever was going on with him. I mean, he even called and said he was Satan. Remember that? But the next yeah, time he I sure do. Us, that God yeah. blessed us and he loved us all? Yeah. So what I'm saying is you're you're getting I understand it. Don't get me wrong. I totally understand the the emotional stress you're under. I've been there a million times. I totally get it. What and I'm I, saying this is, is not I'm just reaching out to you. You know, I mean I'm not even really speaking to you know on anyone or anything like that. It's just I mean, I could have gone on any damn show. I could have. What I'm like, saying is you have to remember that you're loved and that your job is to love, which includes... Oh, loving. I do. I do. Oh, I, I love my them. haters. They're my uh -uh. motivators, but this one I can't pick myself back up on. You have to love yourself. <laughs> And I know that is the hardest, look, trust me, I've been there. It's the hardest. I am my own worst enemy. I know. I was, there. I was there too. I get it. I totally get it. But this is what I'm saying. Once you really understand God's love for us and the way you love other people, 
God loves you like that, and other people love you like that. So you I think. I think if I brought one ounce, if I was standing face to face with you and got to know you for a time, and if I knew I brought one ounce of pain to you, one ounce of pain to your eyes, and I could see it, it would destroy me. Because oh, I've never, I've never done that to anybody in my life. I've never like. Well, I just didn't want to do that, you know. I don't like hurting people. Girlfriend, I don't like I, people hurt. I, I, I hurt suck so much. I have no. I have hurt people, and and not intentionally. Well, a couple of times it was intentional because it was revenge. You know, they had did some yeah. really bad things, and I was gonna pop the score, not even it, but beat it. You know. And, like I said, I used to take pride in that. My favorite song back then was uh, Play at Your Own Risk, you know, because if you mess with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I, feel, I still feel guilty for things. Uh, I think about the way that we could hurt people and not even know we're hurting them, you know, by some of the, the careless things that we do. I mean, I even get mad, like, if someone uh, has stuff on the back of their pickup truck and, and they don't tie it down properly because it could fall off and hit somebody's windshield and cause an accident and hurt someone. Um, there's lots of ways that people hurt people, and it's not even intentional. Yeah. But I think that when you stand in front of God, God's going to say, well, you know, th this, is why if, this is why I think everybody needs to get right. And then we won't, you won't have to go through that, that time of revelation standing in front of God because you'll, you, because once the Holy Spirit gets in you, it's like it, it opens your mind up to all that stuff, you know? So now I think about everything that I do and how it might affect someone else. And you're almost there. So... What you need to do is love yourself. That that's that's where you're at right now, because see, once you once you love yourself like God loves you, then nobody can say anything that's going to hurt you. Because maybe maybe that's why it, maybe that's why I say things to people that are even mean to me. You know, like if I uh, let me give an example too. You know, like if I have to uh, eat something because of my diabetes or whatever, and someone in the someone's saying, "Oh, that person's getting special favoritism." You know, they're you know the rules are in the game. You know, when you're playing softball, you don't you don't eat. You know what I mean? And it's like, but you know, I had to. So like, people would like talk bad about me, stuff like that. But you know what I would do? I I, I would like sneak them stuff. You know what I mean? Because if that person mentioned that my oranges were there and I and called me out on it, but the coach was like, "Yeah, you know," but. If you want to tell them, you know, why, you know, it's my responsibility to, you know, if you don't, you know, because I, I won't have that person on the team talking about you badly because a team's a team, you're supposed to be strong. But I would try to sneak that girl kind of something, you know, because she reckoned, she obviously wanted one or she wouldn't have called me out on it. But then she turned around and was just like, you know, then she's trying to get me kicked off the team and, and she's trying to get me to eat that orange. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I was just trying to be your friend, you know, with – it was something private between me and her. It was something between me and her, but yet she took it to the extreme. And I'm like, what? You know? I'm not trying to get you freaking thrown off this team, girl. God bless America. You know? Because that's an example of how, like, things have happened in my life. And it's just an everyday thing that I battle, you know? So it does kind of make you wonder if there's something wrong with you because, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're constantly being attacked and all you're trying to do is be as kind, you know? It, it doesn't. It doesn't pay. I, look, I mean, look at all these corrupt people in the world. For another example, if I may, please. It you always know, all these pays people that are, to be kind. Always. I don't know about that because look at what hillbilly and and her little Clinton troll. I mean, all these people are doing these bad things, and I see so many people doing okay. bad things I'm and are doing so well two, in life. I'll give you two examples, right? Quick. Saul, aka Paul. Yeah. It was a very evil man leading Christians to slaughter. Yes, I know. Jesus could have been just like through with him and could have just and took him out. 
Mm-hmm. That's not what happened. No, not at all. Okay, George called in and, and attacked us, you know, pretty steadily. <laughs> yeah, pretty viciously, but we knew it wasn't as hard. <laughs> and, and consistent for, for a bit, okay? Okay. So you saw the, you know, you saw the evilness with Saul, and look what happened. That's true. Yes. See, Satan's working on you right now, and he's working on Shar too. And, and I want to have a private conversation with her one day about it. But okay, um, I, I can, you know, I I can I can feel Satan when he's around. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he tries to. He, what does he do? He's here to destroy. He's here to deceive and destroy. And. <laughs> Anything that he can throw in your path. He's so, always so doing it. Con I mean. Right now, you're concentrating not on God, not on his glory, not on his beauty, but with some things that some other people said or did. I'm I, suffering I, I, persecution. I understand it as a human. <laughs> I understand it as a human completely. And I've been there a million times. So I'm not. I'm not judging you because I've handled it the same way in my past. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you're giving me advice because you don't want me to go down that path. I, I, want, I want you to be able to shake it off and stand up and keep that armor, that armor of God shiny and bright and spread his love and joy. Yeah. That's what I want you to do. That I, can, I can do my best on that. Don't bow down, don't bow out, shrug it off, and keep touching. That's what I thought I was going to do tonight was bow out gracefully. No, you keep, know? Keep, keep the love and the message going. That's what you do. And that's how you beat okay. Satan. Okay. Okay? Because okay. God loves you, and we love you, and you love you because you love God. Just please don't take this lightly, everybody. I love you all. <laughs> don't take it lightly at all. Because that is very, very true in me. With love for all. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, Sean, yeah, Sean was okay. asking who the caller was, so I was trying to tell him it was you. Oh. Okay, darling, I'm going to let you go on that note. And I love you all, and I'll... See if anybody hangs out in the chat and wants to call or something, okay? I love you, Judy. I love you, too. God bless you. God bless you, too, sweetie. Bye. Oh. So, yes, we will pray for Casey to find strength. And that God will continue to guide her down the path he wants her to take. And I know it's not to be detoured. I could just see Satan out in the middle of the highway right now, right? With these detour signs for Casey. <laughs> don't, don't take the detour. So the other movie that I wanted to talk about real quick before I forget is um, The Passion of Christ. Did y'all know? Do you know the history of the movie and what happened with the actor? And his initials were JC and he was 33 when he was asked to do the movie. And... Uh, Mel Gibson had said that uh, Satan had been trying to keep him from doing this movie for years. And he said it was time to do it. Yes, Mel Gibson. Wasn't he the director of Passion of Christ? So, 
um, during the filming of the movie, the actor, you have to watch his interview. Oh, my gosh. It's so interesting. The actor was struck by lightning, had a heart attack. Um, oh, it's a whole list of things that happened during the movie. While he was up on the cross doing that doing that scene, it was like Satan was all up on that, trying to make sure that movie didn't come out. So y'all y'all should uh, Google that. Um, I'm trying to remember the the actor's name, but it's a very interesting interview. But yeah, I suggest everyone watch the movie Heaven is Real. That's a, a true story too. And that was uh, very interesting. But there's millions of those NDE stories where people have died and come back. And they all say the same thing little Colton did, basically. And he saw his sister that was dead. And he never, the, she died, uh, she, 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 uh, miscarried, the mother miscarried. And so he wasn't even told about her cause he was only four years old and he met his sister in heaven and told his parents about it. And they were shocked. They're like, you met your sister and they looked at each other. It, it's a good movie. If you haven't seen it, it's a really good movie. I'm trying to stay ahead with the movie on pause. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Casey, just remember, don't take the detour. I hope so, Stabby. And that's all we all can try to do is to inspire people through love because that's what God is. So we share our stories and sometimes they're not comfortable and they're not um, they're not uh, pretty. But it is what it is. But in the end, it, it ends up being a beautiful story because it glorifies God. Because we can turn any negative into a positive, just like God did. And he taught us that. Jesus taught us that with his lessons. So I love that saying. <laughs> it's okay to be disappointed. Yes. Right, Stabby. Anytime, Casey. Oh, okay. That's to Casey. I won't read that out loud. <laughs> Yes, life, you know, life is, um, can be full of disappointments, but I'm learning to look at it differently. And <laughs> I'm telling you that now I've learned that you can call on Jesus at any time for any situation. And he can work it out. That's where the faith comes in. See, I don't, I don't have, I have faith that he can work it out. I have faith that when I feel something or pray on something, that it'll work out. 
I know God is real. That part's not faith anymore. That I know. I know God is real. But I have faith that in in asking him um, to help someone, he does it. And he proved that the other night with that shocking phone call. And that's what validated for me to really try to push the uh, the channel with beautiful people like y'all because when I got that th- those phone calls, I was like, God, really, I, I want to touch this person, and and you know, I don't, I don't want them being um, upset and misguided, and and you know, stressed or whatever's going on in their life. I want to reach this person. And what happened the next night? And I didn't even say that to anyone. So it's not like he, you know, he heard me say that and he called in, and you know. Yeah, okay, Stabby, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. God bless you. It's 4 a.m. here. Facebook. Oh. So what time is it where you're at, Sean? I do Facebook. I put up a video tonight up there from work. It's for the car show we had. But I got like 3,000 subscribers on Facebook. But that's because, you know, I used to uh, advertise for the bar. So. Of course, I don't advertise for the bar anymore, but. Oh, I don't really use it that much anymore. I do Facebook Messenger to do video chats with my grandchildren. Oh, it's 8 a.m. Sleepless in Cincinnati. (laughs) Yeah, it's 4 a.m. here, too. You slept for a whole hour, Sean. You need more sleep than that. Remember, it wipes out your immune system when you don't get enough sleep. As you deplete your white count while you're up. And then it restores, replenishes while you're sleeping. That's why doctors have always said bed rest for everything. I used to laugh at them. I'm like, bed rest? I mean, I used to get irritated because I'm like these silly doctors are always talking about bed rest bed rest bed rest ain't gonna cure this and then when my daughter got leukemia and uh I started studying medicine and then I realized how the cells work your white cells rebuild while you're resting and they're replenished whatever white blood cells you had eight hours ago you don't have now so that's why they tell you bed rest so we're probably all kind of depleted here this week. I hear you, Sean. That's because you're young. You'll feel different when you get older. Man, when I was, I think something was wrong with, well, it was something wrong with me. It was before I knew I had the brain tumor. Um, I had way too much energy. I didn't sleep at all. I'd go to bed at 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning every night and get up at 3.30 and start pumping iron, go lay bricks all day. And sometimes, you know, we'd be working till dark, which was 9 p.m. And we'd be all the way out in North Carolina somewhere or up in Richmond, get home at 11 o'clock at night, pick my daughter up from the babysitter's. Uh, put her to bed, go out there and cut the grass. My neighbors used to get so annoyed. I'd be out there cutting the grass in the dark at 11 o'clock at night. And then I wash and wax my car and wash and wax my truck. 
you know, I was vacuuming my stairwell and, and um, the neighbors could hear because at the time I lived in a duplex. Like, do you ever sleep? But I had a, a, a brain tumor that I didn't know I had yet at that time. So it might have been why I had all that extra energy. <laughs> On that yawn. <laughs> Okay, God bless you. Say your prayers. And um, just know that tomorrow everything will be okay in the morning. It's a new day, a new chance to love God and, and love people and let people love you. Because sometimes when you when you run from some things you're missing out on the love that you could receive from others. You know, I've never watched Harry Potter. You're Peter Pan. <laughs> Fantastic breast. You know that there was a that woman that started the Harry Potter thing was a mom, and she she wrote a story for her boys. That's how she started writing Harry Potter. <laughs> okay y'all I guess I'll uh, probably go to sleep and we'll definitely have a show um, this evening And it won't be so late. I kind of thought you meant beast. <laughs> I thought the breast was funny, though. <laughs> All right, y'all. God bless you. God loves you, and so do I. Night, night, good morning, and all that good stuff. Love you guys.